伝説は語るイースかつてこの地上に栄華を誇った理想郷イースは
2人の女神と6人の神官によって統治され強大な力を秘めた金属により繁栄を極めた神官は人々に敬われその統治は公平無視であった美しい女神は宝と歌われ銀融詩人の主題であったイースの繁栄は永遠に続くかと思われただがその文明の絶頂でイースは恐るべき最悪により一夜にして滅び去り映画の全ては無に帰したそれから700年の長きにわたって伝説は沈黙を守り続けてきたそして今再び伝説は語り始める新たなイースを。Hey mate, how's it going? I'm just sort of、uh, getting everything ready up before、uh, streaming. Won't be long and I'll be almost done. Like I said, I've got a very old PC, so、uh, I struggle sometimes to get 60 frames a second, but it seems to be running at 60 at the moment, which is quite nice. At least it was running at 60. My process is now going to be crazy. Julio. Right then, take that off. Get rid of that. Don't need it. Right then. Hi guys, how's it going? Well, like I said on the weekend, got my PC Engine Mini today.、Um, came through the post. I've literally just chucked it on for about 10 minutes, about 6 o'clock, half 6, something like that. So, literally, I've only had a very quick look at it.、Um, it's quite a cute little machine, I have to say. It's very nice. It's smaller than a standard white PC Engine, but it, it's pretty cute and it looks, it looks smack on to what the white one does. And it's even got the little red sort of、um, extension cover on the back, which covers the USBs and the,、uh, and the HDMI out.、Uh, the pad is nice as well, feels like a PC Engine pad, really. So for the start and select buttons, feel a little bit more spongy for some reason.、Uh, but they work perfect. Because、um, this is the original Japanese white PC Engine, it doesn't have auto fire, which is a little bit of a shame.、Uh, I have ordered myself an auto fire pad for it, but.、Um, So、they, they're not coming out for at least a month, I think. So, obviously, it depends on how the world is at this moment in time, whether I actually get that or not. We'll see. But I, I've put an order in for one. But here we go. Go back to the main menu. So,、uh, what we're going to do here is hopefully, depending on time, well, I hope you're going to be on it for a while, but depending on time,、uh, we're going to try and run through all the games. And I'm going to give you a sort of、uh, a little overview of what I think of the games, the ones I've actually played, probably. Uh, what I actually think of them and if they're any good or not.、Uh, we're going to look for the menus and、uh, the different screen setups and stuff it's got on this. So everything looks pretty good on my side. Oh, this looks pretty good to me. Right, guys, let's have a quick look then. So, Peace Engine Mini. This wasn't supposed to come out.、Uh, cut Konami did tell everyone in the world that it was delayed, but they, they did sneakily release it in Japan.、Uh, I don't know whether they're still available, but if you do want yourself one of these, if you go to Amazon.co.jp, you can order them on there and they will ship worldwide. And I, I think the ship it to UK with import charges was、um, 15 quid, which is a bargain, really. And I've got to keep that in mind for、um, future purchases, to be honest. So, these are the games on the machine, but what we'll do is before we do that, we'll go into the settings.、Um, you've got your, you, you can scan your, for your user manuals. Like I said, I've only had a very quick look at this, so I love this is new to me as well. So, it looks like you can scan for your user manuals there, which I haven't actually done yet.、Um, it does have a lot of the languages, so you can change it into English if you are ordering it. Display settings. 
had a quick look at this. That is your, your standard, um, basically it's right exactly right in the aspect ratio as it should be. It looks perfect to be honest for what I've seen of it. The full screen mode um, looks great but it does have a little bit of a shimmer. That's probably because of um, imperfect uh, pixel size. But it, you, most people are not really going to notice. I haven't seen that one. I obviously the complete widescreen version I don't really know why anyone would play it like that but it's an option if you need it and um, you can look at the Turbo Express so we'll have a look at that as well so what we'll do is we'll have a quick throw one game just to show all the different uh, filters plus you can put a CRT filter on each one of these except for the Turbo, the Turbo Express one and it's got very nice scan lines but the pictures gash it uh, i don't know why i don't know why they don't get especially m2 when m2's conversions they did to the 3ds they did to the switch i've all got beautiful scan lines and really sharp picture with no blur filter but every mini console has scan lines with a shitty blur filter i don't know why they do it like who wants it and that's what everyone complains about as well so i'm not entirely sure why they do it, especially m2 considering they don't do it on their own ports but um, what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll confirm that and we'll go out. Uh, wallpapers, I haven't seen all of them yet, but I'm assuming that just gives you the wallpaper in the background and the screen in. That one is very cool. That one looks like the PC Engine TV, which was uh, a TV that came out in uh, Japan. This super rare. Uh, if you do get them, they're very expensive. I have played on one and they are very nice actually and that looks exactly like one of them. I'm assuming that's probably quite similar to the Mini. Uh, but we'll we'll run through these so what we'll do is we'll go to this one. Uh, menu design, you can change the menu to the core graphics or you can have it as the uh, PC Engine which changes the colour on the menus. So we'll leave it on PC Engine for now and next time we go in here we'll change it to core graphics. So. Let's try a game. Let's just pick one game just to give us an idea of. Uh, let's pick Spratt House. You can start that pretty quick. I do like these menus on this machine. The menus are pretty sweet, and I like the idea they get a card and they insert the card and you get the noise as well. That's really nice. So basically, that's what the screen looks like. Uh, that's your right aspect ratio. It's not stretched or anywhere. It's probably uh, exactly timed up to um, 720p. So it's probably got a four, it's either a 3x or a 5x scale on it. I, like I said, I could be wrong on that one. But it looks pretty nice and it doesn't seem to have any sort of shimmering or anything like that. And that's the background. So if you press start and select together, it goes back to the menu. Um, I do quite like this, it's quite cool. You can save, but it's got the Tetsunoko banks. Uh, which you plugged in the back of the white PC engine for extra slave, uh, save slots. So uh, that's quite a nice little touch, actually, I think. So we're going to go back to the menus, and I'll go through all the different uh, screen setups. So we go to the display setup, and we use the full screen setup now. Uh, back to the menu. Actually, what we'll do as well... Actually, we'll do that a little bit later. So we'll go splatter out now with the full screen. So that's your full screen setup. Which looks very nice. But the, there is a slight shimmer on vertical, I know it's on a shooter map, but like I said, most people are not even gonna notice. And uh looks really nice. One thing I will say about this, what I have noticed straight away, input lag. This thing is this thing is tight. It's really it, it almost feels like there's no input lag on you. I reckon the input lag in this is maybe a frame or two maximum. This just feels like me playing my PC Engine, to be honest. And you can, normally most of the other mini consoles, you can notice a tad bit of lag. You get used to it, you know what I mean? You, you, you adjust for it. But this, the controls feel really tight on this, and they feel like they're acting instant as soon as you press it. So, that's the full screen mode. Or the full 4.3 uh, screen mode. So let's go back. And this time we'll change the display mode to this. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but we'll have a look at it. And we'll change the menu style this time to core graphics. So when we go back, we get the cool little core graphics black menus, which is rather nice. 
by a nice little touch they allowed you to do that. So I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what the difference is with the screen, to be honest. Ah, this is square pixels, look. Right, this is a square pixel mode. Um, as far as I know, as most retro consoles, the pixels and weren't exactly square. Um, so it does look a little bit narrow compared to what it would normally do. Like I say, they tend to be more wide than they uh, they are tall. Uh, but on flat screen televisions, the pixels are essentially square. So uh, these tend to work better on uh, flat screens, but depends whether you like the look, to be honest. Like, it looks right, it just looks a bit thin. So we'll go back. Let me know, guys, if the stream is going funny or the sound's not working properly or anything like that. But uh, seems okay so far. I'm just going to put the voice on a minute. I, you can hear me. Marvellous. Uh, so we're going to go back. And this should be full 16.9 uh, widescreen. No, it's not. I didn't change it. No. I don't want to save it. Save points uh, looks like it's four per game, uh, which is very handy for practicing games. So we'll put that on, and I'll change the menu style back to the PC Engine, because it's a white PC Engine. I quite like the Turbo Graphics, uh, well, the Core Graphics, sorry, uh, and menus as well. They're quite nice. So as you can see, this is a stretched widescreen, uh, which looks pretty terrible to me because. Now it looks like you've got um, Fat Rick going on, basically doing his thing, killing these uh, fat enemies. He looks rather short, but just a bit fat. But you don't really want to be playing in 16.9 because it stretches the graphics. Uh, it doesn't make them look correct, but I don't know, some people like it. It should all, I suppose, at the end of the day. Like, I wouldn't play it like it personally. So what we'll do, just to point out the uh, CRT filter, which I'm pretty sure you can apply to the, the widescreen version. So let's have a look. Yes, you can. CRT filter's on. Here we go. So now we've got scan lines um, with a slight blur filter. All right, the blur filter's not... Yeah, this is pretty terrible. It's not awful, but it's uh, it's not fantastic either, to be truly honest. So that's what it looks like with the CRT filter. I just don't know why they don't give us lovely scan lines, which that does have nice scan lines, but without the blur filter. Because it uh, really wants to be playing the PC Engine in HDMI, looking like that. I know some people do, I suppose, that's why they do it, but from what, from what I tend to see, most people just complain about these modes. So, we're going to get rid of that mode, because uh, I don't like it. So let's go back to how, how I would play it anyway, myself. So I'm going to put it back to, I'm going to put it on this mode. I'm going to take the CRT filter off, and I'm going to change the wallpaper Actually, we'll have a look at a couple of wallpapers. So we'll have a look at this wallpaper. So I sort of check this wallpaper out and see what it's like. It's a bit like the one on the SNES Mini, that is. That's quite cool. I quite like the colour. I do love this game as well on the PC Engine. It's it's pretty much just as good as the arcade. It's not as good looking as the arcade, but um, the game is pretty much exactly the same. If you can beat this version, you can beat the arcade one. Right, cool. Our background's pretty nice. Oh, don't want to do that. Yeah, I do like the colour on that background. It's quite, quite a nice funky orange colour. Uh, so let's go back there. Uh, display, I'm going to leave the display as is. Let's check out just the black background. Which is just going to be a black background, I expect. Yep, 
Yeah, so that's without any other uh, wallpaper, which is pretty much how I would play my retro card, my P PC engine on the TV, to be honest. Like, which is quite nice. I will say about this, the picture is lovely on it. It's very nice indeed. It does look very sweet. We've done a good job at that. Into a slide. Dead. So that's without that background, but what we are going to put it on is the PC Engine TV background. I, I thought that was quite a nice little touch. Wallpaper. We're going to leave it on our wallpaper, I think. And we're going to leave the display as it is. Right then, guys. So that's... Um, this is the games. We'll go through the games quickly, and then we'll start playing some stuff. So on this on the PC Engine side, which means these are the Japanese releases you get on this machine, uh, you get Splat House, you get uh, Genji and the Heike Clans, or or Gempy as everyone used to call it, uh, Legend of Valkyrie. Shame there's no translation on that, but it can be played in Japanese and it's really good. Uh, Gate Ball, which I'm played much. Um, One Man Ninety Four, Dungeon Explorer, Fancy Zone. It is free um, Easter eggs on this. Uh, if you hold down Select and play this game they've they've made a new version supposedly the pc engine specs so if this machine ever gets hacked and they hack the roms on you they might they might actually work on a real pc engine uh, but they've they've re they've remade this game to look more like and sound more like the arcade one so we'll have a look into that same with gradius i had a quick look at the gradius one earlier and it it, it does look a little bit more like the arcade one which is quite interesting um, so yeah, you get Gradius as well and Fancy Zone. Uh, you get Necromancer, which is an RPG. You get uh, Nectaris, which was called... Uh, I can't remember what it was called on American. Uh, but it's a strategy game. Uh, Newtopia, which is quite cool. Newtopia 2, which is good as well. Uh, you get Ninja Gaiden, or Gaiden, whichever you want to call it. Uh, PC, PC Genjin, or uh, PC Kid. Uh, Super Motoro Densu, or um, Super Motoro Adventure. Adventure 2 or Legend? No, I don't I can't remember. I think Densetsu is Adventure. Uh, Superstar Soldier, classic shoot map. Uh, Kung, Fu, Kung Fu, which was one the original PC Engine game, really. Um, Aldenez and Aldines, whichever way you want to pronounce that, which is a super graphics game. You've got Dai Makamura or um, Ghouls of Ghosts. It's also a super graphics game. Uh, you got Spriggan. Or Sinreal Senshi Sprigan, which is a shoot map, very good. Um, Super Darius, which is class. Uh, East 1 and 2, or I used to call it YS because I didn't know that's how it was pronounced, even though it says it on the intro. Uh, that's probably my favourite adventure game ever, but there is, an, um, there is an English version on you, which is very nice. Um, you've got Amico Dracula, Dracula X, Rondo Blood, or Chai Ronon, Rondo. Uh, awesome game. Uh, Bombman Panic, which is a puzzle game. Uh, Chowaniki, which is a very strange humor. Uh, Greatest 2, class. Uh, Snatcher, unfortunately, there is no American sort of English conversion of this. Let's read this a minute. Yeah, there is quite a few reproduction um, Hue cards I've seen out there. So, um, yeah, that would be pretty cool if they do that, actually. Uh, it would be interesting to have a look at these now when I play through it. So, um, they're going to hack it anyway. On day one, I seen a video of a Japanese guy taking it apart and trying to hack it, soldering bits on and connecting to a PC, trying to uh, get into it. So, I don't think it's going to be long. Uh, we've got Spriggan Mark II, which is uh, another shoot map. Uh, we've got uh, Star Project, which is another shoot map. It's class. You've got Tenshi Mayo, or... Um, that was pretty much one of the most popular games on the PC Engine. I do, for some reason, at one point I owned about seven copies of this. I, I've got rid of most of them by giving them away, but I've still got about two copies left. So, if anyone wants a copy, you can have it, basically. Um, Talking Mimi Memorial, which is pretty much unplayable, but there is a secret shoot map on it, which... If you have a look around the net, you can tell when uh, you can sort of work it out to get it. It's, it's not bad, it's just like a little bonus thing. You've got uh, Genki Fuki Densetsu Sunfire, which is extremely expensive. You're talking about 1500 quid these days for an original that. And there's so many copies of that round, a lot of them look exactly like the originals. So, 
it's pretty hard to tell what's original and what's not these days with that. But uh, that's a very nice game. Arcade card that is as well. Uh, Dragon Spirits, uh, which is really cool. Um, you've got Gallagher 88, which is almost arcade perfect, to be honest. So that's the actual Japanese PC game, uh, PC Engine games. So if we go to Turbo Graphics, click in there and we get uh, the American um, overlay, which is quite cool as well, different music. It's rather nice. I really do like the menus on this. I think they're, they're the sweetest menus I think I've seen on any of the minis so far. Uh, so here we have English versions of some of the games. So we've got Lords of Thunder, which is pretty much my favorite shooting up in the PC Engine. Uh, very nice game indeed. You've got A Zonk, which is another great shoot map. Uh, you've got um, Alien Crush. You've got Blazing Lasers, which is Gunhead. Uh, you've got Bomberman 93. A bit weird why the American had Bomberman 93 in the chat. Uh, maybe Bomberman 94 didn't come out in America. I don't know. Uh, Bonk's Revenge, which is pretty much PC Engine 2, or PC K2, whichever you want to call it. Uh, Kadash, or Kadesh. Uh, nice game that Kadash is on the PC Engine. Uh, Chu Man Fu, which is uh, a very interesting puzzle game for two player. Dungeon Explorer, one of my favourite PC Engine games. Cheap to buy, easy to play, just really good fun. JJ and Jeff, which is the American version of Chan and Chan, they did cut out a lot of the toilet humour out of it. So you can't fart in the enemies now and show your balls and piss in trees and things like that. And have craps behind bushes like you did in the American version. Yeah, the menu music's really nice. It is really nice, I gotta admit. Ah, Military Madness, that's what I was thinking in Nectalis. That's the American version. I have finished the Japanese version. You don't really need to read that much Japanese to play it, to be honest. Uh, Motor Roda, which is not a bad top-down uh, sort of arcade, uh, arcade sort of racing, racing game, it's pretty good. You have the American versions of Nootopia and Nootopia 2, which is very nice, so they're both in English. It's a nice addition. They're, they're like pretty much the PC Engine down to the Zelda. Uh, you've got New Adventure Island, uh, which is pretty much Wonder Boy, but a newer version of Wonder Boy. Whole thing about the Wonder Boy games, uh, West One or West Stone, whichever you want to pronounce their name, they made the Wonder Boy games, but Sega uh, licensed it off them and called it the character Wonder Boy. Uh, but they also sold the game to Hudson Soft and they called it the Master Higgins after Takahashi Meijin. Um, so they, they both went off and made their own games, so a lot of the arcade games and stuff ended up on Sega consoles, but they also did on the PC Engine, but the PC Engine changed some sprites and stuff uh, to make them a little bit unique, because uh, Sega owned the rights to the Wonder Boy sprite. Complicated story, but uh, yeah, Hudson Soft went over and did their own sort of thing, and that's a, a new Wonder Boy game, basically. Uh, Ninja Spirits, classic ninja game, very expensive these days. Uh, Parcel Stars getting very expensive these days, but that is officially Wonder uh, Bubble Bobble Free. Came out on the PC Engine first, then got released on computers, and then was converted to the arcade, which is pretty mad. Uh, Power Golf, uh, it's an average golf game, nothing too crazy. Really weird shoot up called uh, Psych um, Psychosis. Uh, R Type, which is R Type 1 and 2. Originally in Japan, uh, when R-Type came out, which is a fantastic version of the arcade run, uh, the hue cards were very big, so they fit half the game on the first hue card, and then there was a second hue card called R-Type 2, which is not R-Type 2, uh, and the second part of the game was on the other hue card, so in, on Japan you have to get the two hue cards, play four levels, and then uh, it gives you a code, and you put the code in on the second one and carry on. And in a lot of it, I'm glad they did that and everyone cut it down because it is a pretty fantastic conversion. Uh, so basically, the American version's got both cards in one, so uh, it is one continuous game. Uh, Soldier Blade, which is a fantastic shoot map, really good indeed. Uh, Space Avia, which is. I love Space Avia, always classic, and the PC Engine version is really nice. Uh, Victory Run, which is a little bit like Radmobile on the NES, but a little bit different. And uh, the American version of East 1 and 2. Uh, for this way, it, it, for me, it's worth buying it just for that. Because uh, that game's quite expensive now. Easy. I do want to pick up an original copy of that. So, so yeah, that's all the American games on it. So, what we'll do, we'll go back to PC Engine first. Depending on time, because this is taking a while to go through that. 
we'll uh, we'll go through each game. So where am I in the list? Let's see up the top. All right, let me go back to the beginning of the list. Right then, guys. So let's uh, let's work our way through some of these games. I'm not gonna have a massive go with some of these games because we'd literally be here for until tomorrow morning. Eight ball or uh, croquet, as it's called in the West. I have played this game briefly. Uh, I don't really know how to play it. I'm assuming you've, you've just got to hit the ball through the croquet hoops. Because it's sort of like I don't know, it's like a weird golf game. I don't know. I not exactly. I have no idea how the scoring system works on this. Let's pick, let's pick the old lady. I don't know what the difference is. Ooh, what's the character? Except the guy with a massive lip. Oh, I can pick another character. Uh, he must be a fireman or something. She looks reasonably normal. The guy with the... have the old guy. Uh, we'll have... Uh, Kimmel Sanders. Well, not quite, actually. Right, no really idea how to play it. I'm assuming I gotta hit it through all the croquet hoops. Ooh, okay. Starting position maybe? Oh, hang on, what am I doing? I cancel back. Alright, oh, I'm aiming by like this, am I? So that. Okay, cool. Let's hoop number one then. Okay. All right, you aim like that and then get the power right. So, does that tell you roughly? Oh, it's way off. I'm not sure if that tells you roughly where the power goes. All right, you. Oh, you actually do control the other characters, then, do you? Ah, weird. Ah, right, okay, I see. So, that tells you the exact distance where that mark is on there. So, that's, so I want to hit it roughly to about there. So, if I hit it on that marker, or just it should go over than I thought it did. So... You control more than one character then. It's weird you control more than one character. Very odd indeed. Yeah, that's about right, that's cool. That tells you exactly how far you're gonna hit it. Um Let's try that one then. I'm gonna try and hit it the Off and I went out. Okay. I do quite like that PC Engine uh, TV surround. That's, that's pretty nice. At least that's what I think it is, anyway. Yeah, it's hard to control all these characters. Oh, that was crap. Do win pairs of two then? Is that how that works? I don't know how many shots you actually get in this uh, game. That's probably too short now. Oh. So, you could work out how to play this game. I'd have to look up Crow. Oh, that was a good shot. I have to look up uh, croquet and see what the sort of uh, the rules are on croquet because I have no idea. Can you hit it back through then. Oh, hang on, the old lady. Uh, okay. Oh, hang on. So you to get that? Are you supposed to get that right in the middle? Okay, let's try it there. Hmm, 
don't know. Something like that, anyway. Anyway, so that last skateboard. Start and select the back. Let's go back. So that skateboard, guys. Uh, that's, that's probably a game that not that many people are going to play, to be honest. Like, I say, the games list on this machine is phenomenal. I have to say, there are a few games in here that you might think, eh, maybe not that, but Skateball being one of them, I suppose. But it must have been popular in Japan. Uh, the games list on this is top notch. So, Gate Ball, like I said, I haven't really played it much, so it's a bit hard to give it any sort of review, so um, I don't play it, see what you think for yourselves. Bomberman 94, or Mega Bomberman on the Mega Drive. Same game. This is a really nice Bomberman game. Uh, everyone says this is probably one of the ultimate Bomberman games, uh, next to Saturn Bomberman, which is very good, or some of the new ones, I suppose. You do need, uh, there is two uh, joypad ports on the front of this as well, which is quite nice. So you can play, as long as you've got two pads, you can play double straight off. Um, one nice thing about this as well, my God, finally, a mini console that comes with a joypad with a long cable on it. This has got a three meter um, cable on it. So it's basically six foot, oh, slightly over six foot. So it's got a nice long cable on it. So no need to get an extension. I suppose it, it seems it's a USB. You could get a cheap USB extension cable. Job done. It's got a nice long cable, so you can fit two joypads in it, and you can buy a multi-tap for it as well. Which is quite a nice option, especially when it comes to five-player five bomb man. So you've got your battle mode, you've got your normal game, and password. Password is for the normal game. Let's have a go battle mode. Uh, maybe it is two player only then the battle mode. Yeah, it is. Right, we'll go back. Uh, can I reset it like a normal PC Engine game? Let's have a look. Can I hold Start and press it? Nope. I wonder, because on the PC Engine, you hold down Select and press Start and it resets the game. Um, yeah, that could be a bummer. This is a way of resetting the game. Do I hold a button down for a while, maybe? Press another button? No. Hmm, I don't know. I'll have to look at the menu to see if you could do the reset like you would normally do on a um, PC Engine game. Right, I, we'll, have, we'll have to go to the single player. Yeah, I say this game is considered one of the classic Bomberman games. The Mega Drive version is very nice as well. Yeah, I like to say it is, it is. Why not, me? No point messing around. Yeah, it would be, uh, it seems a bit odd not having uh, a reset. There must be a way of doing it. They must have left that in. Uh -huh. It's same to normal single player bomb man games, you work your way through the levels and then fight bosses. You gotta find um, the enemies and then get to the exit. and power-ups as you go along. This game has got uh, most of the power-ups in there as well. And it's got the uh, kangaroos. Yay. What's that one do? Oh, that one jumps. Oh, that was lucky, wasn't it? See, this is a real nice game that I've got in my collection as well. Yeah, I'm surprised how tight the controls are in this. They feel really nice. They feel better than the other minis, to be honest. They feel a little bit tighter. It feels like instant. It'd be interesting when somebody puts a lag tester on this and sees how much lag this actually got. Whee. Yay, that's the exit. You can basically run away now. Oh, 
bonus coins. Nice. Gotta collect them all. I probably could have got that one coin as well. Nah. Yeah, so you got the battle mode, which, well, it's always fun and bomb, man. And the battle modes are always pretty awesome. Get a couple of players around. Like I say, get a multi tap for this and play five player. I do think the pitch is very nice in this. I think M2's done a really good job of the emulation. Sound as well, guys. It sounds perfect. I give it that. The sound sounds pretty excellent. So that's Bomberman 94. Uh, that's a really nice Bomberman game. If you love Bomberman, it's definitely well worth picking up. I haven't finished it myself, but um, it's a very nice game. Dungeon Explorer. I say this is one of my favourite PC Engine games. It's a cheaper game and one of the early ones, but it is in Japanese, but you don't need to read any English to play it. Recently as well, um, I don't know if you guys ever knew this, I never knew this game, Dungeon Explorer, got released on the SNES. Like, what the hell? Uh, so go the elf. you got multiple characters in this game. Yeah, it got released on the SNES. Uh, it never got released uh, in the West, it was Japanese only, but it was translated in um, 2012, and it was called Crystal Beans. What's that about, like? And it is literally a, a remade version of Dungeon Explorer 2 on the PC Engine CD. It's not as nice as Dungeon Explorer 2, I don't think. But um, it's a remake version. Nice. Yeah, so this game is very much uh, like Gauntlet, but it's got more adventure into it. Even though, like I said, you don't really need to read English, to be honest. Just walk up to each character. Let them do, let them babble at you, job done, that's it, then never need to go back to that character ever again. Yeah, Crystal Beans. Crystal Beans in Dungeon Explorer. That's the full name of it. I never knew that existed until literally about two weeks ago, and I, I did finish it on the SNES. Um, it's not particularly that hard, and it is a remixed version of Dungeon Explorer 2. It's not as good as Dungeon Explorer 2, and it's got a more cutesy look to it, and the music's nowhere near as good. But Dungeon Explorer 2 is on CD, I suppose, but um, yeah, it's Dungeon Explorer. How come I never knew that, like? I love Dungeon Explorer. Yeah, so what you do with this, you get to towns, and you end up going uh, through dungeons, funny enough, like, and uh, explore it. Crazy. I think this game's got really cool music as well. There is a couple of power-ups you get. If you press the select button, you can change between the energy back, and that one is like a that one's like a sort of um, an action magic. So essentially, it's like uh, offensive, and uh, that that one is defensive essentially. And each character's got different uh, weapons. Right, you can't get through there, so. I say this game is very much like Gauntlet. So we'll use one of this defensive magics now. So that kills everything on screen. Uh, you do kill bosses and you get a choice of crystals when you kill the bosses. Uh, and those crystals update your stats. Uh, so you can, you can get ones that make you go faster, ones that um, make you fire in, hurt a lot more, more powerful. If you press, I think you press start and go to status, there's your top. So your top one is, uh, what is that? I can't remember what that is. I think that's speed, essentially, the top one. Your turn is attack power, then your stamina, and then your intelligence. It doesn't matter. You can have your guy figure shit. It, it doesn't seem to do anything at all, so I'd never do the intelligence one. Um, what happens when you kill a boss, you get a crystal, and it changes color. So you want to get the one or two of the top ones, really, essentially, to play this game. So you could be a dumb warrior, but it doesn't matter, as long as you can clip things with your weapon, you're done. You could beat this game. 
One thing about that crystal beans as well, it's really skimpy on um, the power-ups. I say the levels on this get... Uh, ah, they get killed. As I get really killed. It's not going well. It's really not going well. We gotta do be here. a quick push that down, push that up. You get a couple of continues, not many. I think you can get about five continues before um, you, you basically have to game over. It is handy to have a little bit of speed, so all the bosses will run into. Angie's looking pretty terrible. I got him. So there's the crystals and they change colour. So the yellow crystal is your basically your speed. The blue crystal is your power. So power you want or speed, one or the other. So that's Dungeon Explorer. Well recommended. I really do love this game. And if you have got a PC engine, get all to the second one. So that's really good as well. So that's Dungeon Explorer, guys. That's class. Well worth playing, that is, and you don't need English to play it. So, there's two versions of Fantasy Zone on you. So, we'll start it up, and this is how Fantasy uh, Zone is on the PC Engine. It's a nice conversion on the PC Engine. I did think it was slightly laggy controls in the past, that's why I never bothered playing it. But, um, no, it is, a, it is a nice version of the arcade. Only slight snag uh, with this is you haven't got auto fight. At least I don't think you have, unless they've added in. No. Uh, good luck playing this game without auto fight. That's all I can say. This is where an auto fire pad uh, is pretty much essential in this game. So if none of you played Fancy Zone, Fancy Zone is like a cute version of Defender, which I never liked Defender, but I really love the Fancy Zone games. Yeah, the PC Engine version is pretty nice. It's not as nice as the arcade, but it, it's it's damn it's a damn nice version of the arcade. It's got all the bosses, all the levels. It's got the nice cutesy graphics and pretty funky little music. Yeah, so what you got to do in Fancy Zone is you've been. You can go in shops. You've got to kill all the bases and then you get to a boss. So, I am going to get the big ring, which makes you go slightly faster. I am going to get twin bombs, because that's always good. And I'm going to pick the seven. No, I'm going to fly anyway. Uh, let's get a wide shot. Uh, weapons in this game don't last very long. Like I said, but this, you, you do need an auto fire in this game. It's a shame they didn't add uh, an option for Autofy, which would have been quite nice. Yes, you take out all the bases, and then uh, the boss appears then, until all the enemies are off-screen. Like the arcade one, the bosses keep the background. A lot of the other conversions to this are never 8-bit machines, and I never kept the background. This is hard work without uh, quite a tricky arcade game. This is as well, especially later on. Yeah, he's dead. Cool. It's got really nice music as well. This game has. There is a fantastic um, collection of these games on the PS2. The Fancy Zone collection, it's amazing. And it's got an arcade version of Fancy Zone 2 on there as well, which was actually made on console first, and then it was converted to the uh, the arcade by M2, they remade it. The head of M2 uh, put the money up for it himself, and he says it was probably not worth it because he spent more than his car converting it and putting it on the Sega 16, I think it was the Sega 16 arcade board. 
But yeah, so that's Fantu Zone. So, as a, um, a little Easter egg on this, or a little, uh, little nice little extra on this, if you hold down select, I believe, and press start, it boots up into a new version which they've made for this mini. Uh, which has got redone colours, as you can probably see by there, redone backgrounds, and apparently redone music as well. So, let's have a look at this then. Yep, that definitely looks a little bit more colourful. And the music's changed. I'm not sure whether it's a little bit more zoomed out now as well. I do like the music in the Fantasy Zone games. It's weird though, I've never really liked Defender much. I used to play back in the day years ago, because that's pretty much one of the only games you would see in the arcades, but... Not a big fan, like. So we'll have the wide shot as well. It's quite nice that they redone these games. Definitely change the colours and the backgrounds on these as well. Okay, that's the boss. Get to the boss, sweet. It's just a shame you need you need uh, an auto fire pad, otherwise you've got no chance. One thing I am noticing about this joypad, uh, as nice as it actually is. The D-pad and the cross is a little bit sharpish around the corners. Or I've got really uh, girly skin, one or the other. I could well have girly skin also. So it might, it'll probably weigh down a little bit with your finger after you've used it for a while. It's probably like having a new uh, joypad. So it's probably my girly skin. I'm a sensitive man, what can I say? <laughs> The new music's nice on this. Shame that you're probably not really going to play this game until you get uh, an auto fire pad. The D-pad does feel very much like a uh, PC Engine pad. Yeah, the colours are nice in this as well. <laughs> Ah, yeah. I say if you do, if you have got a PS2, check out the uh, Fancy Zone collection. It's amazing. So that's the remake of Fancy Zone, which looks rather nice, actually. I, sp I hope, like I said, like um. Like you were saying, reluctant. I hope uh, they actually release these. Well, they're probably going to get hacked off here, and I hope they work on a real PC engine because that'd be really cool if they do. As far as I'm aware, they did they did make them to PC engine specs, so uh, they're more like a sort of a slight remixing of the game. So hopefully they will. I do like this menu music. It's very nice. Right then, so the next game has got a special version. Uh, Gradius. The PC Engine conversion of uh, Gradius is very nice. I say I definitely recommend Fancy Zone by the way guys, it's a very good game. So the PC Engine version of Gradius is very good anyway. It's not quite arcade perfect but it's pretty damn nice. It's got very nice music. <laughs> It is a classic uh, Gradius, mind. I remember this, it's an old game, but I remember this being in the arcades. I think this is one of the first games you had like a proper power-up system. Another game that I, I love the music on. This game used to be everywhere back in the day in the arcades. I need to get a bomb actually, because uh, I do have a bomb to bomb that enemy of the bomb. It's 
say these controls on this on this mini are super tight. Very nice indeed. It does feel like there's almost no lag. I reckon there's like say, I suspect that there's maybe a frame or two of lag on this. It seems really well made. I'd say I could be wrong, but to me it does it does seem rather rather tight playing. Seems very responsive indeed. Got a shield. A couple of ways of doing this really. You can sort of stay at the top of the screen or you can stay at the bottom of the screen. Can stay on the bottom of the screen as well. On the NES version, this you can stay in the middle of the screen. The boss actually won't hit you. Don't know whether it works on the PC Engine or not. No, it doesn't. Shoot the core. Classic shoot the core. That's it, that's first boss. So that's great, yes, guys. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll cancel out to that and we'll try the special version. So same as before, I pretty think you hold down the slack button. And you press start. I see this one has been done. That's pretty nice because that's how the arcade one starts as well. I think you can skip this, mind. Yeah, you can. Because a bit of a difference already. Six face in that. I think it sounds a little bit better. A few more things going on, I think. I think the colours on the enemies are slightly different as well. Yeah, it definitely sounds a little bit more like the arcade one. I don't think the PC Engine one is that far off, to be honest, anyway, but... Definitely different colours on the background. That's cool. And noise sounds like the arcade as well. That's cool. Yeah, that's really nice as well. I say that's brilliant. If these actually will run on uh, normal PC Engine hardware, that's fantastic. Can't wait for the rip. They're bound to rip the ROMs off these. Like I said, uh, I've seen videos of people trying already, so they are trying to hack it. They all get hacked eventually. <laughs> Lucky end, right? Once you've got lots of options, you can basically uh, sit a bit. Yeah, that's real. That's a really nice uh, update. That is. I think it's going to take me a while to go for these games. I may have to be a bit quicker on some of them. Yeah, I definitely recommend Gradius on this uh, this update to Gradius because um, it is a, 
game well worth buying on the PC Engine anyway, because uh, the PC Engine version is very nice. Pity Salamander's not on here, which apparently is going to be on the um, European, well, the Western versions of this machine, as far as I'm aware. But I, whether we'll actually ever see the Western version, I don't know. Yeah, so that's the remake of um, Radius, or Nemesis as it was called in the UK. Because they couldn't use the greatest name for some reason, I don't you know exactly why. Uh, Necromancer, uh, this is an, an adventure game. It is supposed to be pretty decent. Uh, I do own the original of it as well, but it's pretty much unplayable. Unless you get a guide, I suppose, that's the only way you're going to really play it and go through it. Heavily Japanese, as you would expect. Say, it is supposed to be quite decent though, so... I think it was quite a popular game at the time. As in these games, go and see the king first. If that is the king, of course. Can you talk to him? Yeah, can't talk to him. And I can't walk in front of her. Ooh, what happened then? Alright, oh, okay, that's my MP bar. Yeah, so... With this one, unfortunately, guys, unless you uh, you can read Japanese, or I can have to do this one day. I'd really thought about putting Google Translate on, which all right, Google Translate is not fantastic. But try and play my play through uh, a Japanese RPG using Google Translate. I should do that really, because it, it might be a fun experiment to do. But anyway, um, this is Necromancer. Like I said, you're probably not really going to be able to play it. So, I won't go massively into this one because uh, it is on the American and the American version is in English. Nectaris, uh, this is a very famous uh, strategy game that ended up on various consoles, various smartphones, various Xbox Live. Uh, it was on there as well. It is a really nice game. I have finished it once or twice. Uh, it is quite a good strategy game and you don't really need to read Japanese to play it. Basically, you've got to work your way around the moon, and you've got to take out their base. So you can do attack in. So you take your unit, uh, you hit that, and that gives you your grid, which is where you're going to move your unit. So uh, in this as well, it's quite tactical. If you're on a higher plane than enemies, let's say you're on a higher level, you get an advantage. And obviously there's advantages from tanks going up against humans. Um, so you, you get elevation and stuff takes into account on this game as well. Once you move close to an enemy, you can attack them. Oh, sorry if I do that. So your standard troops up against uh, tanks don't stand much of a chance. So basically, your idea is to get your own. Basically, get on the map as fast as you can, take out the enemies. You're always at the disadvantage in this game, but you can take their base and you can make you can make new troops as well. Um, so you can park uh, troops in the base as well. There is various things. I haven't played this game for quite a long time, but um, when I did play through it, even Japanese, I actually played through it. I really enjoyed it. So the idea is you you move all your troops, and then once your turn is over, then um, you basically go down to the bottom. And then you give the computer to have his turn. So the computer will do their strategy. Like they'll try and get high ground and stuff like that. So this game's not easy either. The computer's quite, uh, it's quite cunning. Troops all, uh, so units also get XP as well. So the longer they survive, the sort of stronger they get. So there's a bit of tactics going on there. So you see the 5% and the 0%, that's elevation, that comes into sort of like, also the terrain they're on as well. So it is actually quite a complicated um, strategy game, it's a good one as well. So that's that. Well recommended that is, Japanese or English, you can still play it. I say I won't play these too much either. In fact, I might skip the Japanese versions of these because the American versions are on there, so we'll, we'll skip these. Uh, so that'll save a little bit of time. Uh, the American version. So we'll have a look at the American ones when we go to the American side. So that's Newtopia 1 and 2. 
Ninja Gaiden. Or Gaiden. It's probably Gaiden, isn't it? Like uh, Gaijin, as they call Westerners in Japan. So it, it probably is Gaiden. Um, this is a conversion of the NES game. Looks nicer than the NES game in some respects. Um, it does have nice colours. It's the most hideous um, power scrolling going. It's really bad. But it is pretty much Ninja Gaiden. Or Ninja Gaiden. But just with uh, nice colourful graphics. Don't know what it's like compared to the NES versions. I think it's pretty much the same game, but uh, I could be wrong. So, extremely difficult game. Uh, also very unfair in lots of places, but it's one of those games where basically they don't want you to stop. I've got special weapons as well. You literally have just got to carry on going in this game. Once you, st <laughs> Once you stop running in this game, it's usually uh, game over. I'm not very good at it. It is a wall technique you can use for getting up walls without actually jumping on the op opposite wall. Come on. It's quite a frustrating game, unfortunately. But some people love it and get good at it. But yeah, the uh, the parallax scrolling on the PC. I don't know why they did it like that. It's, it's pretty bad. That's how basically you get up walls. You do like a left and right trick to get up the walls. I can say in a lot of ways this is a lot nicer looking than the NES version, but it's quite a crappy looking PC Engine game to be honest. Not a game I've really played much, to be honest, Ninja Gaiden, but... I suppose it's a good game when you get into it, you get used to it, but it is literally all about just running non-stop. Don't stop, because if you do, you get in trouble. So they, that's Ninja Gaiden, like I said, I haven't really played it much, I can't really say, but it is considered a good game, so... So, PC Genshin, or PC Kid. Classic. Classic PC Engine platform game. There's lots of different versions of this. There's a remake of this on the... Um, I think it's on the PS2. It's on the uh, GameCube, which is it's pretty nice, actually, the remake. Uh, there was two SNES games as well, which are not bad, but I don't think they're as nice as the PC Engine ones, to be honest. Uh, there was a Game Boy game as well. They did an arcade game as well. I'm not sure if my colours are a little bit too high on this, because he looks very red. do not normally look that red. But, oh well, we'll just go with it for now. Basically, you're a little cave boy who, uh, who nuts enemies to kill them, like that. can do like um, the head bounce techniques, you can bounce them for extra points if you can and you can spin in the air like that as well to go over a further distance and you get power ups then in this game so uh, which make you go mad, you get meat
Sometimes you get a bad game in those things. You can bounce these guys for extra points. You can get a couple of power-ups, so this allows you to do like it stuns the enemies. Watch out. That one stuns the enemies. So now we're invincible basically on the next power up. Ah, I missed him in. See, if you get good at this, you can bounce off the enemies. I used to play this game quite a lot when I was a kid when I had it. I, I loved it basically. But the second game, Bonk's Revenge or PC, PC Engine 2, uh, that is loads better. It's a really good PC Engine. You can just stand there and nut them as well, but you've got to time it right. I love the wall climbing in this game. I'm grabbing on. Why ain't he grabbing on? You basically use your teeth to climb up walls. He's quite a cool character, PC Kid. Well, that's why I always known him as actually his PC Kid, but... I do like this game, it's very nice. I think the second game is the uh, pinnacle of the series. Not overly fast on the third one. There was three of them on the PC Engine. It came out with Hugh Cardan CD, but um, I don't think it's as good. I think this game actually came out in the Amiga as well. Just shot in. Oh, damn, I'm doing terrible bit. It, uh, it has a, a bit of a charm to this. The gameplay on this, it, it it does have a sort of like a bit, of, a tiny bit of a momentum to it. So you have got to run him a little bit. There's funny things like jumping in um, as I die. You can go inside this dinosaur here. Oh. Should time this right, really, shouldn't it? So nut this dinosaur in the head. So that's uh, PC Kid. It's a really nice platform game. It's quite, it's quite long as well. You can speed. Some people do speed run this. Um, they can do it. I think it takes about forty minutes if you get really fast at it. They use a lot of the spinning, they jump in the air, and the, the more time they spend in the air spinning, the better. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a really nice game. I like that. Right then, Super Moritaro Densetsu Two. Uh, it's pretty much unplayable. It's it's almost like. Um, it's like a game, like like uh, Mario Party. It's like that type of game. It did four Momotaro games, if I remember rightly. Uh, one of them is actually a platform game. The rest of them are all this type of thing, which are uh, like sort of um, Mario Party type games. So you could probably get a guide and try it out and play it, but more likely you're probably not going to be able to play it. I would say with this one. Streams are looking right, guys. Looks good for my end. <laughs> Dave, you're Japanese, obviously you can be able to understand what's going on here. It's Legend of the Peach Boy, I think uh, Momotaro is. Yes, yeah, so you go round and it's like a, a game thing. So it, being uh, non-Japanese is pretty much unplayable. Like I said, there is a few games on here which are unplayable, but the majority of the games on here are fantastic. And this is one of the fantastic games. Superstar Soldier. Very nice shoot map this is indeed. Very hard. Ah, cool, nice. I hope you're enjoying the stream, guys. Hope you don't mind me going through all the games. Be interested to see the games probably on you. 
I thought I was going to do a review with the machine, but I thought, nah, I'll just do a stream instead. Yeah, Soldier Blade. Ah, uh, Soldier Blade. Superstar Shoulder. Soldier? Shoulder? Can't even place it. Uh, soldier. Um, these offer a normal game, and they offer a 2 minute and a 5 minute score attack mode. Uh, the score attack modes are amazing. You'll just get addicted to them. And occasionally, you every now and then, someone will do a scoring competition on them. So we'll try the 2 minute mode. I'll show you what it does. These, this one not so much, but uh, they've got a lot of nuances to them. Uh, they're not just straight shoot things. Plus, you, you really need the auto fire to be honest. Uh, they've got a lot of nuances to them. There's like enemies you've got to shoot, uh, things you've got to shoot together, and uh, you've got to pick up the balls. The faster you do the waves, the faster that um, the next wave comes on. So it, it, it's all about sort of trying to get everything and trying to kill everything as fast as possible and they do get quite addicted if you challenge somebody for the score on you the one on soldier blade is fantastic that one's really good that one's like full on there's, there's a lot of things you've got to get right to get really high scores on that I think I came fifth in a scoring competition on that about six months ago, and it, there was some there were some tight scores. This you've got to get inside it, and you get the eight thousand points. Oh, eighty thousand points, sorry. But say this is where to use the scoring uh, mode properly, you, you need uh, water fire. But yeah, so basically you got two minutes. You get um, highest score possible. And then tr you get to a boss then if you're lucky, and then try and defeat the boss. These you've got to kill at exactly the same time, if you can, and you get extra points for doing that. Then the boss, you can sort of stay at a slight angle, stay close to him if you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, soldier. I'm a big fan of the Star Soldier games. I think they're really good. I I don't really like the, the original one of the Nestle. But um, yeah, Final Soldier, Super Star Soldier, Gen Ed, um, Soldier Blade, all fantastic. And uh, some of the obviously the uh, Parodia. It's really good. Star Parodia. All right, so that's the two minute mode. So we shall go back. We'll go back to the standard game. So I've got a proper um, single player game on this, uh, which is really good. You all got really nice music as well. Remember back in the day this was uh, the game to have. There's lots of different weapon systems in these as well. get a sub weapon as well you can get a shield you can get missiles that weapon doesn't look that great but it, it, it's really good hey this mini does sound pretty smack on I have to admit I'm not really noticing any differences in sounds it sounds really good it plays really tight as well it's uh, it does feel like it's got very minimal lag. I think that is a shield that spins around you and uh, takes out bullets. We'll try the green weapon, which is the laser, which is cool. Once you collect so many of the same weapon, the power drop full, when you collect another one of that weapon, you get the explosion. That weapon by there, you shoot it till it flashes, and when you collect it, it explodes, but it also gives you uh, a respawn, essentially. So when you die, you respawn exactly where you left off can rotate uh, these round you as well, which uh, take up bullets. Uh, if you've got the auto fires, again, funny enough with the auto fires, you can rotate them round you really fast. And it acts like a bit of a shield as well. There is uh, sub bosses in here, so this is like a mid level boss. 
go I'm taking my silver set, I was reading the chat. <laughs> oh, that'll teach me to read the chat. Yeah, that went really well, that did. Fantastically well. Yep. <sighs> read the chat and die. You get the idea. The two minute, five minute mode are really good for practice and really good to challenge yourself to a high score. Uh, hopefully, this will keep your high scores like it does on if you're playing in a duo. I say if you plug the, some of these games in the PC Engine Duo because it, it's got the uh, memory in it, it will keep your high scores, which is really nice. So you shoot this one. And then it'll explode and then you get uh, a life where you left off. Yeah. Oh, that is the flame weapon, which it's not particularly that great actually, the flame weapon. So yeah, I'm really liking this mini. I think it could work. I think it is my favourite mini so far. So I got a lot of nostalgia from PC Engine I suppose as well, so that helps. I did buy this. I don't exactly need it, to be honest. I've got about five PC engines anyway, uh, and loads of games. So I, I don't particularly need it, but I wanted it. It's just a really nice PC engine collectible. Go back to this uh, mid boss again, and hopefully I'll kick his ass this time, and then uh, we'll swap to a different game. Look at the chat this time. <laughs> Probably the normal five in might be better for this boss, to be honest. Oops. He's dead. Yay! Got it once, so. So, anyway, that's Superstar Soldier. Definitely well recommended that game is. It's uh, like shooting whips. It's uh, definitely one well worth playing. Right then, to the Kung Fu, which was the original PC Engine game. This was the game that came out, wasn't it? Uh, this was the game that they wanted to prove that the PC Engine could do big, massive sprites compared to the NES. Not particularly a great game. Um, for some goddamn reason, about 10 years ago, I, I don't normally, I, normally I can't, Normally I sleep like a buddy bay basically. No problem sleeping at all, but one night I just, for some reason I couldn't sleep. I think it was the middle of summer or something. And uh, I decided uh, about four in the morning to actually finish this game. Uh, went through it all. Don't ask me why, because it's not exactly a great game. So you can punch and kick. you got obviously this meant to be Bruce Lee. I suppose it wasn't that great uh, advert for the PC Engine, I don't think, this game, but in still shots, it, it looked very impressive for its time. I'll jump over there. It's almost like an endless runner game. You sort of—I uh, probably need to kick out actually. Um, I don't particularly play that great this game either. These guys are a pain in the ass. In the face. I can't remember how long it took me to finish. I think I was playing it for quite a while <laughs> in the middle of the night. Another game. I, I don't know why I decided to play a very crappy game in the middle of the night. Another one was Thunderblade on the uh, Mega Drive. I did that one in the middle of the night as well for some reason. Looks some stupid. Hmm. 
music all reminds you of old uh, kung fu movies. Especially Angel the Dragon. Which is probably out about the same time as this. I can't remember that film got released. I suppose this is another game that most PC Engine fans have owned or got a copy of. Because it's pretty cheap. You may as well have it, why not? Oh, jump backwards, that was a bad move. Yeah. Now we're cooking gas. And I work out to kill this boss. Ooh, duck down. Ah, the brain. do take different tactics as well, uh, the guys. Come on, walk into my fist. Uh -huh. Yeah, the levels just progressively get harder and harder and you end up with uh, caves and things like that. Ah. Guys in the head. Green priest uh, ducked down. Oh, no, killed by stick. Six of stones won't break my bones. They knocked me out, though. Yeah, so that that's uh, the kung fu. I say that was the first ever PC Engine game. I think it was more of a sort of uh, just to show off sprite size, really. Oh, now we get into a classic, which I was playing on the weekend. Is uh, Aldenes or Aldines? Uh, super graphics game, very, very nice. <laughs> Another game that's worth literally probably three times the price of this uh, mini console. So the super graphics was the uh, basically the new PC Engine, a proper full-on 16-bit version of the PC Engine, uh, better graphics chips, and uh, well, two graphics chips. So I got some extra Parallax layers and stuff, and but it never really took off, unfortunately. But at first, this game doesn't actually look like it does much, much more different to an actual normal PC Engine, but uh, it soon gets quite nice looking. And it does have very nice music. Oh. Shield weapon's good. Get the power up then, it was a bit greedy. You can get these orbs to go around you, uh, which you can basically keep them on your side for an extra firepower, or you can send them off and they'll hunt the other enemies down. Or you can have them so they spin around you. Uh, you need the spin around you. Any bonus weapons are that powerful. I say that shield weapon is super powerful. <laughs> Probably 
probably should have changed my weapon really, but yeah, keep this one, why not? Is it that ever weapon really? That weapon's not particularly very good for that boss. Can't fire fast enough. That's better. Another oh, ship, cool. You can send the ship off and it'll uh, go off and shoot the enemies itself, or you can recall it back in and it'll shoot, or you can hold down the button and uh, it'll start spinning around you, and you need that because uh, they will give it to the bullets when that happens. Big bosses in this game. For like, you know, full screen bosses. Make tactical shoot them up as well. There's a lot of stuff to learn on it. The bosses you can learn. Some bosses got safe spots, some of them are just really hard. Yeah, I say really nice game is it, it does start opening out to be quite impressive later on. There's a lot of stuff going on, but I say the first level doesn't look that great. So that's um Aldines or Aldanez. Uh, super graphics game, very nice indeed. Well worth playing. Uh, expensive to pick up unfortunately, but um, if you've got a super graphics it's a must really I suppose. Uh, the other super graphics game on here is Dai Makamura or um, Ghost and Ghost. Fantastic conversion of the arcade. Uh, you do want to hold down select and press, or hold down the two buttons and press start on this to get into this menu because this game actually is, um, you want to put it on very easy, not very easy sorry, easy two I think it is. Easy two. Uh, easy two is not easy one because this game actually is harder than the arcade one for some reason. It's on slightly harder difficulty. This possibly apart from the Sharp X sixty thousand is possibly the best home version of this game. thing you have got to watch is the arcade controls are basically four ways you've got your left down left right uh, not eight way and obviously the d-pad's eight way so sometimes you can stick yourself without realizing it like that oh, I don't want to click that 
worst weapons in the game. Could be worse, I suppose. Pretty much a little bit on their own knackered side there, haven't they? Da -da 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 -da. Classic arcade game. Tricky game, but it can be learned. Hard work with this weapon. Really hard work. I want to try and get to the boss though. Let's try again. Jump. Should be able to get under the sky. Ah, see, sometimes that don't work. It doesn't always work. Sometimes you can get underneath him. For a chest, it's normally a chest there you can spawn by jumping off. Ah, too hard with this weapon, really difficult. Anyway, goes a ghost, classic, hard game, does take a lot of practice, but um, well worth it. You have got to clock the game around twice to beat it. So, two very nice additions on here these two super graphics games. I suppose they could have put all the super graphics games on here. That would have been quite nice, but uh, obviously they chose not to, so it was those two. Uh, now we got Spriggan, which is a CD game. That is really cool, that is. <laughs> I like that. That is exactly like those CD units uh, sound as well. Very nice. That's a nice little touch. This is a very nice shoot map as well. One I wouldn't mind picking up myself some point. I was playing there a few weeks ago and I almost managed to one credit. It's not particularly the hardest game. But it, it is quite nice if you check on uh, harder levels. But yeah, what you got to do is you've got to mix and match um, the weapons. So depending on what weapon power-ups you got, depending on what colours you use, you get slightly different weapons. So it's all about finding a weapon combination you like. Plus, what you can do is you can throw a weapon off to pick another weapon up and use it as a smart bomb. But this setup's uh, very nice. Don't want to do that really, though. So what I want to do is get another red. So I'll chuck the bomb off, get rid of the yellow and get the red back. The weapon he's using here is very much like a Star Soldier weapon. I say, I'm pretty sure this game is actually in the Aleste series, or Aleste. Same as like um, Aleste on the Mega Drive. It is pretty much in the same series, I believe. It's made by Compile anyway, so. Maybe it's not, maybe I got it wrong. So I don't want to play these games for too long because uh Ah, that's bad to isn't it? Yeah, dead. Don't teach me. Yep, so that's uh, Spriggan. Uh, very nice vertical scroll and shoot map. Uh, well worth playing. 
got some interesting weapon systems and you can have a play around with it, uh, make you different types of weapons. Well, you pick it up and you got that weapon. So there's definitely a lot of customization you could do in this game. To get the right weapon set. I've got all the fire in. So that, that's um, Spriggan, very nice. See, so the game's listing this thing is pretty fantastic. Unfortunately, another game you really need auto fire for. I do like that CD ROM sound, this class. <laughs> On the CD ROM screen. Yeah, another game you can't. It's very hard to play this without uh, auto fire. But uh, it's a very nice game on the PC Engine, very nice indeed. So they did a remake of this on the uh, Mega Drive Mini, which is also very nice. So hopefully it won't be too long before I get the auto fire pad. I am a bit of a Darius fan to be honest, I do love the Darius games. I think out of all the shoot em ups, I, I've got to have a shoot em ups, I prefer over Darius, of course, but I think out of a, a series, a long running series of shoot em ups, because it's been going since the 80s, um, I think Darius is probably my favourite shoot em up series, or long running series. I wouldn't necessarily say they're my favourite shoot em ups, but it's definitely my favourite shoot em up series, I, I am a massive Darius fan. I think I am going to have to pick up um, Darius Cosmic Collection on the PS4, even though I've got the Collector's Edition coming, but because of uh, the coronavirus and the way the world is at the moment, I might not see that version for months and months and months, unfortunately. It has been delayed due to the coronavirus. But I think when I get paid next time, I probably will end up buying the Cosmic Collection on the PS4. I'll play some uh, Sweet Perfect Darius 2. When I was in Hei in Japan, um, which is uh, one of the best uh, arcades in uh, Tokyo, not as good as Mikado, I don't think, but it, it is damn good. Uh, they had a bit of a sort of um, a Darius corner or Darius shrine thing going on, and they had Darius 2 on two massive flat screen TVs, and they built like the custom built arcade. Uh, sit down arcade machine you sit down there you got the two massive screens two huge speakers uh it's pumped up uh, that was amazing playing darius and that it was really impressive really good indeed so anyway that's super darius which is class we'll do the american version of that uh castlevania dracula x rondo of blood or channel rondo super system car that's quite nice it's the thing that sounds cool. <laughs> this is my second favourite Castlevania game. Uh, first being uh, Symphony of the Night, which is actually a sequel to this. In der guten alten Zeit lebten die Menschen. Lid dimension. I don't know what Lid Dimension is, but sounds good. Niemand glaubte, dass es in Zukunft. I'm glad this has got the original. Um, sort of German intro. I like the Frieda mouse bit, it's quite nice. Whatever that means in German, I don't know. Can't skip it, just like the CD version. You have got to watch the intro the first time you play it, until you get a save on the machine. It's like the Frieda. Wir haben uns hier versammelt, um die Mächte der Finsternis mit unserem verfluchten Blut zu rufen. Wir wollen, dass sie die Welt regieren. Wir erwarten lächerlich den cool Niedergang der Welt. They did uh, a version of this on the SNES. It was like a remixed version. A lot of people hate it. It's nowhere near as good as this. It's not okay, though. The Fledermouse, whatever that means. Die Nacht. Let's have quite a nice flair to a German, doesn't it? 
der Burgherr des Teufelschlosses. Die Stäuschen der Herr Schlosses. des Bösen, Graf Dracula, ist auferstanden. Count Dracula is auferstanden. Whatever that means. Rises, maybe. Count Dracula he rises from the dead. In Dauten, in Aufenstaten. It would be interesting if actually somebody could speak to him, you could translate that. So, name entry. And we're going to put Tuna. Yeah, I say this game is uh, fantastic. Also quite expensive these days. Uh, this game has never really been cheap, to be truthfully honest. Even back in the day, it was about like 60 to 80 quid and never really went down. There is secrets in this as well. There is two characters. You can save Maria on the second level, and if you save her, you can use her. She got different attacks to Richter. This game as well, like all Castlevania games, it's got some of the best music in gaming. I give Castlevania that. The, the whole Castlevania series has just got some phenomenal music. Same as the East series. But there's some particularly very nice tracks in this. Even going back to the NES games, they, they had some amazing music as well. I think the Castlevania music got better and better as they went on. And then got worse in the latest ones. So you only have to watch the intros the first time once you've got a save on the machine, like on a real PC engine, you can just skip the intros if you want. There is multiple routes through this game as well. Uh, there is secret bosses and secret levels, you just got to find a way to get to them. So it does have a lot to come back to as well. It's not an easy game yeah. either, some of the bosses yeah. are hard. Yeah. I finished it a little while ago. Shaft or death, whatever you want to call him. Do a nice flip. Ah, oh, I've tried to flip over here and I got. The music's phenomenal in this game. It's very good indeed. A couple of little tricks you can do: you can jump over. You can't swing your whip, your whip around in this mine, so more like the classic Castlevanias. Hey, this machine is worth it for this game alone, to be honest. Just, you know, it's, it's literally about half the price of what the original of this machine would cost you. Uh, this game, sorry. Get through this wall here. Uh, there's a pit for you, which, uh, there's a little sort of extra bit you can get over here. If you fall down there, you get to the first secret level. And the first secret boss. The bosses generally are harder for the secret levels. But it's interesting to find them all. Some of them are hidden quite well. Some of them you gotta fall down pits.
Oh. Teach me to sort of uh, get impatient with me. They really nice graphics on this as well. So the levels get really good as well. Kill him. I'm gonna change you though. Not bad. Oh. 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 Maybe we won't do the first boss. Nope, we're not gonna do it. But anyway, guys, that's uh, Dracula X. Uh, fantastic game. Like I said, it is my second favourite um, Castlevania game next to uh, Symphony of the Night. Well worth playing those. Uh, Bomb Man Panic, how far are we through this list? We may have to hurry it up a bit. So we're never going to get through one. Bomb Man Panic is basically a puzzle game. A little bit like uh, Puyo Puyo, sort of. Nice little effect then. Not a game I've played a huge amount of though, but it, it does seem pretty nice. It did get an arcade release as well, I believe. It's quite interesting. Sometimes you get that sound on the real PC engine. Probably a lot of people never even knew there was a, a puzzle sort of uh, bomb man game. Quite an interesting little puzzle game. You basically got to match them up, and then you've got a once you've got a couple go, and you can put a bomb on them and they explode. to blow that bomb up actually. Oh. use of the bombs. So you get the idea, you put everything down and you use those red bombs to explode the bombs. Otherwise you just match four up and then four of them will go. So if I put on the bomb it will blow up. So a pretty nice little puzzle game and say something I don't really I haven't really played that much, even though I do have a copy of it. Um but it's pretty nice. It's a nice addition to this. So we'll go through these a bit quicker I think. Now for some strange shit. This game is uh, this game is good. It's probably the best version of this game. You've got some weird looking alien in the background over there who's attacking everything and you've got two muscle guys with holes in their head who like protein pills and uh, you pick a guy... I don't know what he's supposed to be. A guy or a girl. Uh, uh, you've got to pick the guy because the guy's got a man beam and everyone loves a man beam. It's a very strange shoot map indeed that they did loads and loads of these games uh, and they get weird and weirder. <laughs> Most of them are just really odd. Check out the Saturn one. Oh my god, that game is weird as shit. But the first one on the PC Engine, I think it's the best one to be honest because I, I think it's actually not a bad little shoot map. And, you, and, you, and, you, and you've got a man beam. Who doesn't like a man beam? Ugh. Yeah, and you pick these protein guys up who got protein pills and make them um, give you power ups. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's funny. It's quite funny how weird some of these games, uh, some of these games got. <laughs> Got some very odd bosses as well, but um, yeah, it's quite it's 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 not a bad little shoot up. Oh, protein pill. Yeah, this is my uh, this is my muscle guy. Oh, I need to get up, I think, and. Uh, But yeah, you get the eye. Oh, there's my man beam. Starts off quite tricky. I need to get that man beam on him. Oh no! Five. Yeah, so it's uh, Four. it's quite. Yeah, it's quite. I don't Three. know what to say. There you go. It's quite, it's quite, it's quite well. an odd game, but it's quite good when you get into it. So that's uh, Chowaniki. Another absolute classic on the PC Engine is Gradius um, 2. This is a CD game. Uh, it's almost arcade perfect, I would say. In some ways, I think this might actually be arcade perfect. All Convention was called in the West. The PC Engine version of this is very nice indeed. Got really nice music. Again, being a CD game. Konami, back in the day, music was fantastic. Nice sound chip in the arcade game, so it would be good as well. Photon Torpedo. Photon Torpedo. Torpedo. I didn't Yeah. Yeah, me. Ripple You got the fire moons of the fire dragons. I remember this in the arcades. In quite a few arcades back in the day, this was. Quite a really big update when you come myself in on the first game. Option. They never classic, well worth playing on you. PC Engine, I've got to make if you if you love shoot 'em ups, the PC Engine has got you covered. The amount of fantastic shoot 'em ups on the PC Engine is crazy. Probably one of the reasons I love the PC Engine so much, actually. The shoot 'em ups are my favourite games. Get the ideas, guys. That's um, greatest two. Fantastic. Snatcher. I'll show you it quickly. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't convert this version. As, oh, I would have been so nice if they actually converted this to English. But I, I sort of understand that would have been a lot of work. Uh, Snatcher is quite an interesting game. I'm not really into digital comics. I have played it a bit. Uh, on the Mega CD, which is an English, the only prop officially translated English version, and it is quite an interesting game. It's a bit like sort of Blade Runner slash sort of like in the future, and um, you got these um, you got these robots posing as humans called Snatchers, and uh, your Gillian Seed, who's um, basically he's a junker who's basically hunts down Snatchers. So what they do is these Snatchers kill their 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 um, the original people and then they, they become hosts from so they integrate themselves into society and um, it's your job basically to hunt them down 
it's quite an interesting game with some really nice music actually and it was uh, I think it was Kojima's I don't think it was his first game but it was Kojima that actually made this like so <laughs> come on a lot of Japanese computers back in the day it's a cool game nice intros nice music unfortunately totally unplayable unless you read Japanese But you've got to answer a lot of questions you need to do with investigation. So it's pretty much, it's a, it's a nice addition if you're Japanese, but unfortunately for the West, it's, you can't really play it. So Spriggan Mark II, which is the sequel to the original Spriggan. Uh, this one's actually a horizontal shooter and a pretty nice one actually as well. Another game that I, I wouldn't mind playing quite a bit, Knacks at Soft to make very good games. This one I played a little bit and it, it seems quite a nice game. Quite different to the uh, original Spriggan. This one's more like a sort of anime game. Come on, Greg. Should go down, I think, for them, for the look of it. That episode is a bit hard to dodge them. Yeah, so this is a uh, quite a nice shoot map. See something I, I I wouldn't mind getting into a little bit. Spriggan's quite nice, Spriggan Mark II. Uh, another classic, a little bit easier on the standard level this is, and it does have a very nice uh, caravan mode as well, which is quite good fun. Uh, this is another Star Soldier game, actually. This is the Star, uh, Star Parodia, which is a parody on the Star Soldier games. Uh, also really, really nice. The cool music as well. Dun, 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 dun. So I'll show you the um, the battle stage. Battle stagey. I'll show you the two minute mode. They say there there is a whole single player to this as well. The five minute mode is really tricky on this to get good scores. Missile. So if you like cutesy shooters, this is a, a really good one. In the single player mode, you have two new characters as well. You have uh, Paro Caesar, which is basically the character I'm using now, which is from Star Soldier. Uh, and you have a PC engine, which you fly around, which is really good. And there's a Bomberman ship as well. All being classic sort of um, Hudson stuff and Hudson games. I do like Hudson Soft. Even though they did, they did get um, bought into Konami in the end. That's probably why we've ended up with the mini. Only missile! Yeah, it's, it's amazing how fun these mods actually get. Yeah. 
you just wouldn't think a, a two minute shoot em up uh, could literally you could sit there and play for hours it's crazy that but you can get really addicted especially the um, the uh, soldier blade one that is amazing That's one of the secret bonuses. Two minutes for that. Cool. So we'll exit that and I'll show you the single player game. Uh, yeah, so you've got basically your option. The PC engine's really cool. So you got a little white PC engine. A little hue cards as power ups. <laughs> Which is cool. I say, I, I do love the games list on here. There's so many really good games on this. This is definitely my favourite mini so far. I didn't even play through all the games yet. Even if I do own a PC engine for half these games. It's a nice easy way to play sometimes if you don't want to plug the PC engine game in and, and you can just basically play it on this. Then homing missile weapon is uh, quite useful. I like the little sort of um, Tetsunoko Bank thing that they got on the back as well, now I've uh, got some extra powers. <laughs> just quite a cool little touch. So, anyway, that's uh, Star Prod, yeah. Really cool game. What are we getting here? Uh, Tenchi Mayo, I'll show you this quickly. It's pretty much unplayable. Like I said, it is pretty much one of the most popular games. This thing is the best selling game on the PC Engine. So, if anyone wants a free copy of this, let me know. Uh, Hans posted at the moment, unfortunately, but uh, we'll do eventually when all this craziness stops. See, this is a full-on adventure game, so it, it, you know you are going to need to read Japanese really to play it. Corner's a little bit sharp in this pad on the one side where it joins together. Any bit. Mario. Yeah, you can't skip all this. You'll be here forever. Anyway, guys, it is an adventure game. Uh, it is pretty unplayable. Unless you're Japanese. We've got Google Translate. Uh, this is another game that's pretty much unplayable. This, I think, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but I think this is like like a sort of dating sim slash girl life type thing. I, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but there is a secret shoot -em up on you. Another game I got the original off, but uh, I never replayed. If you look on the net, there is some, they have ripped the uh, shoot 'em up out of this. I'm not entirely sure how you access it. Like I said, no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, maybe in Japan this was uh, a really good selling game that was really popular. So, it, is a, it is very heavily Japanese, so unfortunately we can't play that one. Oh, the uh, in Takami Memorial there is a uh, shoot 'em up. There's a, like a, a secret shoot 'em up game. I can't remember what it's called now, I can't remember which one it is, but um, I think the PC works ripped the shoot em up out of it. That's it, Force Gear. Uh, if you look around, you can find it on the net. It's not bad actually, Force Gear. It's, it's not a bad little shoot up, but a little sort of uh, a small, I think it's a two minute mode on it. It's, a, it's a, not a bad little game, it's pretty fun. I'm not sure how you unlock it in that game though. Uh, Densi Fukeki 
uh, something sapphire. Uh, shoot them up. Uh, arcade card come out very late in the PC Engine's life. This does some things that the PC Engine shouldn't really be able to do. Especially considering that uh, the arcade card was only an extra 2 megabit of RAM, uh, 2 megabyte of RAM, I think it was. It was 20 megabit or 2 me megabyte. But this is a really nice game done by Red as well that made some very nice games. They did the Tenchi Mayo games as well, but they did all the PC kid games. Uh, they did um, Lords of Thunder, Gates of Thunder, this. Very talented company. So it's a vertical scrolling shooter with some uh, very nice graphics. It's almost like it does polygons at times as well. A really nice soundtrack to this as well. This game is quite tasty at times as well. Uh, you can die really fast through this game. Each character's got three different weapons as well, which you can power up. If you let go of fire for a while, it charges up your um, side pods. Which you can use to get extra points and you can use it for extra scoring. Ah. and get the boss there. This is one of the games I want to try in one credit. But I need quite a bit of extra practice on it to be honest. Actually I don't think using our weapon on the boss is that useful on this boss. It's useful on some bosses. First, then other one. Right first, then the left. Can't remember the bullet patterns on this number. I think we just stay. Do you mean about that? You could die really fast than this. I think the most I've managed to get is to halfway through level 4 on one credit, and that's like when I was playing it quite a bit and it was jammy. Yeah, you, know, you just gotta stay in the middle. Ugh. It's got some impressive bosses as well. All the stuff like uh, Pulsar was doing. Stuff that the PC Engine shouldn't really be able to do. Let's go the bullet patterns then. This game's not too bad. Just gotta remember them. It's just basically left and right in the middle. It's a day then. You get the idea anyway guys, uh, really nice shoot 'em up, uh, pretty fantastic graphics, uh, goes for a pretty penny these days, the original of that game goes for about 1500 quid. Ah, uh, there's a few hours you've got to put into Takamimi Mimi Mimiyu. Know? 
Yeah, he did get a lot of um, flack for it, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. He did it also. We all got to actually play him. There's another one as well with um, which one's four skiers? Another sideways scrolling one. Because there's a vertical one as well with like um, it almost looks like a guy on like a, a bike sort of thing. I can't remember what it's called now. There's a couple of them in there, and uh, that's quite good. Yeah, but it's quite cool. They ripped them. I can't argue with it. You should find them on the net anyway. Play them. Yeah, Sapphire is very good, but say it takes a lot of practice. Bullet patterns you need to learn. Once you get once you get the bullet patterns down, you learn the enemies. It does get easier. This is taking longer than I was expecting, guys. Dragon Spirits. Classic Namco arcade game, uh, quite a nice conversion as well on the PC Engine. My one complaint about this game is your dragon is way too big. It does become very difficult to dodge stuff sometimes with your dragon. But this game's got some nice music, um, it's a pretty good conversion on the arcade, it's pretty decent. There is a second one called Dragon Saber which is better. It's like a game you don't see in the arcades very often, it seems, to be honest, like, but uh, I have seen it a few times. Unfortunately, another game that um, definitely benefits from having uh, Waterfire. You can get up to three heads on the dragons, and you can get a couple of different fire ins as well. You can power your main fire up. Like I say, you've got to bomb the floor as well. It's one of those games that most, I think most PC Engine owners ended up having this in their collection because it's, it used to be quite a cheap game, I, I think it's gone up quite a bit in price lately, but it always used to be a game that was under a tenner. I think in the past I've, pro <laughs> I've probably had somewhere, I've probably like 12 different versions of it. 12 different games of this all the time. I just, it was one of those things that I'd end up doing deals with people or I'd end up picking up uh, deals on the internet and they always come with this game. But that's Dragon Spirit, guys. I, I definitely recommend that. That's good. It's hard later on, though. Galaga 88. Really cool little Galaga game in the arcades and quite fun to play. And... Uh, Quite a fun PC Engine game. You can choose whether to uh, take a life. You start with two lives, but you've got a single shot, or you can take one of your lives from the start and get dual shot. It's probably the way to go, to be honest. Yeah, unfortunately, they're not on this uh, mini pad. That's the one thing it doesn't have. I, I sort of understand why they did it, because that is how it should have been originally, but I think they should have released it with the auto fire pad. That'd be my one gripe. But, like I said, you can get an Autofire pad for it, but it's it's not coming out for a month, I think. I think it's like a third-party company doing it. I have got it in order, though. I did try some USB pads in here to see if they would work. I tried an Xbox pad, I tried a PS4 pad. Uh, I couldn't get it working. I've seen someone online using a Switch-wired uh, pad in it, which seemed to work, but it, it seemed to go crazy on the Autofire, which might be handy for some games. So I don't know if there's any USB pads out there that will actually plug in and work. See, this is quite a nice arcade game. It's quite a good uh, score challenge game. Especially if you like uh, Galaga, which I quite like Galaga. I always like to go to arcade club and um, trying for the high score on it, but there's, uh, there's some people who go there now are getting pretty good at it. So yeah, that's Galaga 88. It's a nice addition. I like that. Ah, new old stock for 35. That's not too bad. What's that in pounds? That's about 28 quid. That's pretty good if it's new. Uh, we've seen Splatterhouse at the beginning, but I'll show you it anyway. I love this game on you. It's not, obviously graphics are not as good as the arcade, it's not quite as gory as the arcade, but uh, this pretty much is the arcade one. Uh, it's, a, it's pretty much exactly the same as the arcade one, just cut down graphically basically. Uh, if you've got a PC Engine and you like this type of arcade game, 
Uh, this came well with having in the collection. And apart from the FM Tones Marty, which has got a fantastic version of this, to be honest, uh, this is the only home conversion. The Marty version is very expensive as well. You've got a nice slide on you as well, which uh, oops, kicks ass for certain bosses, which I can't do now. You can slide through these enemies as well. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can stay in this corner, you can stay in the middle. I used to play the arcade version, it was always in the middle. Probably why I stayed in the middle. Probably used to jump in, didn't I? Ah, I'll stand up for that one. Ah, oh, Rick's dead. And usually, with good practice, I can one life this game. Only problem is. I've tried to do it quite a few times in a replay, but um, the <laughs> the uh, the baby level, the baby bubble level, can sometimes be incredibly random. It can sometimes screw you over. Jump in front! Oh, come on, get off! Say this is a fantastic version of the arcade one. That's so Black Ops guys, classic. You don't see new old stock PC Engine games anymore. You used to occasionally come across um, people with old uh, import boxes that have like was six or seven games in it. It's uh, Wonder Momo used to be really used to be the cheapest PC Engine game ever because I think there was just there was just hundreds and hundreds of import packs of it. This is Genji or Gen P sometimes people call it. This actually is an arcade game and this actually does look almost arcade perfect, which is quite funny. It's actually not a bad little game, but it, it's hard. You wouldn't think this was almost like arcade perfect to do, but it, it pretty much does. It's quite a big game, this is as well. And once you get about halfway through it, you can continue for a while, but once you get about halfway through it, you can't continue anymore. You've actually got to do the rest of the game without continues, which is really hard. A difficult game. There's a second one of this on the PC Engine as well, uh, which is quite nice. I say this game's this game's okay. It's not amazing, but it's okay. It is pretty messy at times, I have to say. end up dying pretty quick. So that's Genji. Not the greatest game in the world. That's usually tend to be quite cheap on the PC Engine, that is, to be honest. Legend of Valkyrie. This is a really nice Namco arcade game, and to be honest, the, the arcade version has got some really nice uh, zoom-in sort of scaling effects and stuff. It looks really pretty, but I think I actually prefer the PC Engine version. They, they tweak the controls a bit, so it's a little bit nicer. It is. I've done a replay of this on my channel. I did a uh, one credit replay of it. Uh, but I used the translated versions. There's a couple of places where it's handy to have a translation. So. 
But I really like this game on the PC Engine, it's really good. It's quite a big game as well, it, it, it is quite tricky. The, the last boss is really hard. I was playing it for a while, like... There is a few points though, there is one or two places in the game where you need you need to know the answer to certain questions. And it's just a little bit of a guessing game to get it right in Japanese, I suppose. But you can still play it. Yeah? Yeah, I think the PC Engine version plays a bit nicer than the arcade. You get the idea, she goes around, she jumps over a lot of ledges and stuff. There's a lot of jumping puzzles and stuff in this game. Uh, but it is it is quite a nice arcade game. It's really good. It is a NES version of this, but it's, it's not actually the arcade game. Your best off for you is, uh, this is actually weapons you can buy. Um, depending, just, just buy the A weapon is your best bet. It's the cheapest one. Uh, the weapons last a certain amount of time on you. Um, so basically, you can you can you can stack the weapons as well. So like, as long as you get to another weapon before the last one runs out, you can buy another weapon. So basically, there's your there's your choices. Be yeah, so let's have a go with that one. So you can stack weapons on top of each other. So when the one runs out, uh, the next one will kick in. And you do want to pick up the money as well because you will need it. That's Legend of Valkyrie. I really like that game. I say, check out my uh, replay of it. It's a bit of a long replay, but it's good. So, that's all the Japanese games. So, we are getting through these a little bit quicker. So, let's go into the American uh, games. So, I start right back at the beginning of the list. So, here's on. Another game by Red, here's on. This is pretty much uh, PC Kid the shooter, essentially. I think it was one of the games that was pushed on the um, TurboGrafx-16. I do like this game. Uh, Auto is quite good. I haven't quite managed to finish it on one crowd yet. You can kill things via booster, you can power charge in this as well. Power charge is very useful. The booster is very handy for killing things. You can get a power that makes you tiny, which then you can't charge, but it's easier to dodge bullets. It does have a little bit of a home and shot. You can get it, they can't die. Uh, you can collect um, like characters which uh, help you uh, do extra fighting for you. You can get extra power-ups and stuff as well. Got some nice power in this game as well. There's quite a lot of it. But yeah, that's a song. That's definitely uh, well recommended. Or oh, there's one of the power-ups. So that's definitely recommended. That's really good. So I'm going to rush through these a little bit quicker, guys, because time's getting on. Um, Alien Crush, shame they didn't put Devil Crush on you, because that's, uh, that's even better Devil Crush. But Alien Crush is a uh, pinball game that started the Crush series. This ended up, um, they did three of them all together. They did Alien Crush, they did Devil Crush, and they did Jackie Crush on the SNES, which is not that great. There's a new, um, let's see if I can find it. There's a new game that's sort of made within the sort of um, Devil Crush games on the PC. It's pretty nice to be honest. Uh, I find what it's called now. 
It is called uh, Demon's Tilt. If you've got a PC, check out Demon's Tilt. It's very much like um, Devil Crash. I think these games still rate as my favourite pinball games. I'm not actually into pinball, Mike, but... The thing with this game, the screen does flick in between the two tables. On Devil Crush, it does actually uh, scroll. There is a lot of bonus levels and stuff in this game as well. So the more you play it, the you open bonus levels up. Same as you do in uh, Devil Crush. So yeah, are you our first bonus stage? I always wanted Devil Crash on the PC Engine. I always wanted a copy of it. I've never owned a copy of it. Not the Mega Drive one, which is pretty nice, but I prefer the PC Engine one. Even though the Mega Drive one's weird. It's done by um, Technosoft, so they did remixes of the music and their style, which are fantastic. I think I, I do prefer the PC Engine music. And the table doesn't look as good as the PC Engine, but the bonus rounds look way better. So that's a pinball game. That's, pretty, that's a very nice game as well. Like Alien Crash. Blazing Lasers, uh, which is uh, Gunhead. Which is the first of the Soldier series on the uh, PC Engine. At least it is within that series. Made by Compile. Uh, based on uh, a movie called Gunhead, which is nothing like a shoot 'em up. But this was the game back in the day when this came out that people were wowed by how good this game actually was. Uh, it used to be in all the magazines saying this was the best shoot 'em up on anything. It is a good game, I like it. It is a bit long winded, mind, but um, it is nice. The other soldier games, are, I, I think, are pretty much better, to be honest. There was a special version of this as well. Um, it did have a caravan mode, because this one doesn't actually have a car mo caravan mode as uh, standard. I wonder if that's on you. I don't think it is, Mike, but we'll uh, click back to the menu soon and try it. Yeah, it's a nice shooting map as well. I like this game. It's gone up in price these days. Got the American one, please and losers. An I would like to have, but um, it's the same game really, so it's hard to buy it again, I suppose. Yeah, so it's a very nice game. Let's have a look if there is a special edition of this on you, which I don't think so. Let's hold on, select. Yeah, I think Demon's Tilt is on the Switch too, as well. Yeah, I mentioned Jackie Crush. That's um, it's not as good, Jackie Crush, though, is it? It's, it's okay, but it, it's not as good as the PC Engine ones. It's like more of like a um, an alien game, now, isn't it? Which I suppose, which is what the first one was. Nah, so there's there's no um, caravan mode of this. There was a special edition of this, which was literally just a caravan mode. Bomberman '93. I prefer this one, the Bomberman '94. I do. Don't know why, just prefer this version for some reason. <laughs> Same thing here, battle mode, five players. Comlink, hmm. I wonder what the comlink is. I wonder if we can link two PC engines together. Yeah, $60, what's that in pounds? That's about 50 quid. Yeah, it's about to go in price, I suppose, isn't it? For a complete copy. It's not bad. I'm not sure if I've got it. Did I have an unbox copy? I might have an unbox copy of it. I've got about 90 unbox games. And I might have a I might have an unbox copy in there, I can't remember.
do, 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 do. So, you know, you put your classic Bomberman action in uh, different arenas. You've got your uh, five player multiplayer. Pretty much, if you like Bomberman, you can't go wrong. end up killing all the enemies and stuff so yeah so it's Bombman 93 same sort of thing really just uh, some new arenas and stuff Bombman can't really go wrong really Bombman 93 is really good Bong's Revenge or PC Engine 2 or PC Kid 2 whatever you want to call it I think this is the best P uh, PC Kid game I'm not overly fussed on the third one. I don't like it as much for some reason. The third one, the first one's really good, but this version's really nice. I really like this game. It looks nice, this game as well. It's got cool music. I used to have this back in the day, and uh, I used to play it all the time. Quite a big game as well. It can be finished fast, but... Um, Generally, if you know, you're doing all the bonus levels and stuff, and you're working your way through it, it'd take about two hours to go through it, maybe a bit more, depending on how, how fast you're going through the game. I'm going to ruin this guy's day. Colorful graphics on this as well. There's a bunch for there. Let's see if I can get my power up. There's lots of bonus levels and stuff in this as well. Like there's one by there. Actually, that's not a bonus level. There are bonus levels all, all the way up. There's the bonus level. I'm not going to go in anyway. Okay, but it's before you can... Um, So that's um, Bonk's Revenge, which I say that that this is my favourite uh, PC Kid game. I really like Bonk's Revenge or PC Engine 2. Definitely recommended. A lot of recommended games for this thing. Kadesh. Kadesh, interesting arcade game. Uh, really nice conversion on the PC Engine. It doesn't look as good as the arcade game, but uh, at least you got. Um, all four playable characters, unlike the Mega Drive version, we just got two. And two of the less interesting characters as well. But on here, you get um, working designs brought it to America. They changed the cover, I don't think they did anything else to it. But at least you get um, four of the characters. They did finish this on stream a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the mage, if you can use him and get used to the way his magic works, he is by far the powerfulest character on you. But he can die really quick, unfortunately. And we're not going to give him a name. I 
So basically in this game you work, you, you t you've got to talk to characters, you've got to work your way through the dungeons in this game and you got to, you just go on a big quest basically. Like I say, he's a bit crappy at first, but he, he does have uh, a spell system like this. But he got a spell that uh, puts his knives out around him, and there's an electric spell he got. It's monstrous. It kills bosses really fast. And his reach is... It's basically more than it looks. See? And there is a power-up system in this game as well. You've got experience for killing enemies. So you can power up the levels. So there is places in this game, and really to to finish it properly and, out and get more you know, powerful enough, you can, there's places in this game where you need to hog up to certain levels. It just makes your life easier later on if you do it. And like here, there's one place you can hog for ages quite easily. Oh, now I'm in trouble, isn't I? Yeah, you can't get a water at first. You gotta see a mermaid first and she puts you in water. Ah! No, oh, I'm not good. Hard work to get out of water once you're in it. Yeah, you see a mermaid and um, she gives you an item then. You can swim in water and it doesn't hurt you, but up to that point you want to stay well away from water. Like I said, he, he is really powerful if you can use him. He can destroy the bosses. Not very good in slope, sir. The easiest character probably to use on is the woman. Ah, dead. I like this game. It's, uh, it does take a bit of learning. Um, you do have to sort of learn a route through the game and the best place. The characters are quite different as well. The ninja is probably the less powerful, but he's quite useful because he chucks the ninja stars. Uh, each character's got their own strengths and weaknesses, really, and uh, it is quite a nice game. And is this one two player? I think this one is two player. I think it is, I don't know. I'll have some look. Yeah, it is two player. I thought it was. It's like the arcade. I remember seeing this in the arcade when it first came out. I was quite impressed. It's quite different for an arcade game. Uh, Chu Man Fu, or what's it called? Uh, B Ball, I think it's called on Japanese. Quite an interesting puzzle game. It is two player as well, which makes it interesting. So it's one of these games I, I, I wouldn't mind sort of getting into. The idea is you've got to get these balls and you've got to put them on the square blocks. So you can kick them or you can hold the ball down and ro bo uh, basically roll it. Which then you can roll it against enemies or you can kick it and you can kill the enemies. But the idea is to get this ball in uh, these places. But it can, be <laughs> it can be a bit tricky, see? And you can kick the balls into each other. So you can back off your back that there. Seems quite easy at first, but then it, it soon becomes quite tricky. In two players, <laughs> it is quite confusing. Yep, level one. Quite an interesting puzzle game. Those hatchet men are cutthroat killers, but they can't dance like you. So now we're getting far more complicated now, so some of them in here, check that off. Up on it. Uh, where's the green screen? Oh, it's the other side. Oh. You gotta be careful as you put it around the corner. Sometimes you go around the corner instead of the ball. You gotta get it in the right angle. Do, 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 
Cool. So you get the idea. It, it gradually gets harder and harder, and more tricky, and more enemies. We sure can clear those bozos quickly. The best way to keep those goons off your back is to lock them into corner. Shouldn't do that. It's probably racist. Sorry, guys. But yeah, B-Ball. Quite cool game. Interesting puzzle game. It looks rather nice as well. It's got nice chunky graphics on it. Chu Man Fu. Oh, this is Dungeon Explorer again. Obviously, like we played on the Japanese version, but it's the English-American release of it, which, uh, like I said, you don't really need to read English on it, but it is handy if you've got the option. So we won't go through that one again, because we've already done it. Hey Jane Jeff. Or Chan and Chan. This I say this is literally the cut down version of Chan and Chan. This is almost like uh, Mario Brothers, like the original Mario Brothers for the PC engine. Like in the in the Japanese version he is pissing against the lamppost. And you do see his balls when you actually um probably see his ass. There you go. But this is quite a, a cunning platform game with lots and lots of secrets. I don't know why, and you basically meet guys in the toilet. Can jump on enemies as well. There's quite a lot of secrets in this game. Yeah, the bird's still crap, and you just like uh, Japanese one. You can get a bit of a sort of. Um... Ah. Can get a bit of a. Uh... Ooh sort of fast sort of run for this level, it just becomes sort of... Yeah. You're normally a guy behind the tree bit. The last level on this is really difficult. Yeah, he just looks like he's sitting there, he's taking the crap in the, in the uh, Japanese version. There's bits like this in this game. How the hell do you get past that? You've got to kick the tree. Oh, that's it. There. So there is secret platforms. Reminds me a little bit of sort of like the original Mario, but with a bit of sort of um, Wonder Boy, the original Wonder Boy to this game. I'm going to meet the guy. Alright, this is where bonus comes in. It's not a bad game, JJ and Jeff. I think I'd probably prefer the, the original Japanese one, but it's quite an interesting platform, a very early platform game. Ah, dead. Well, Avenge you. So that's uh, JJ and Jeff. Uh, the English version of Military Madness, which is obviously if, you're, uh, if you speak English, this is probably a preferable way to play it. <laughs> Never actually played the English version, perhaps I should. 20th century, the earth has become all too small for madness. Cecil Neal. Insatiable needs. Insatiable, yeah. The most powerful nations stack their claims for their uh, moon's riches. Much fighting has occurred. That's the plot. Yeah, so it's the game, same game basically, but it's all in English. You can see your attack, your shift, your command, your guide. See, so, I do like this game. It's a really good strategy game. It's a game you definitely take a long time to play. We go with motor order. This game is it's a bit like micro machines, but this game came out before it. Uh, right, course select. So there's various courses. It's not a bad little game, I think. I think I should have gone to the options and changed my control. They changed control for the American version. I don't think I've ever played the American version. Ah, handle it. Uh, what you want to do? The controls are weird, weird ass in this game. Uh, but that's that's the one you want. If I remember rightly. Now uh, we'll get cheap tires. Uh, we'll get uh, can't afford an engine. 
so you can buy weapons and stuff and just leave it again. Yeah, it's a bit like Mike Machines, you got to stay at the front. And you, you can shoot people and then bash them off as well. Yeah, the, the, the controls at the bottom the ones that actually make much sense. The other controls just feel weird and wrong. So basically, you've got to try and get to the top because I bought an engine. I, I'm just really, really slow. It is a bounce system, as you just noticed then, which bounces you forward. Sometimes that can play to your favour and it can actually bounce you ahead of uh, some of the cars and you'll end up coming first. Ooh. Don't mind this game. It's not brilliant, but it, it, it's quite interesting. Motor Road 2 is better though, and Motor Road 3 is a bit like Super Sprint. Uh, really small cars, like uh, massive arenas. It's quite a different game again, but that's quite interesting as well. I don't think M ever came out in America. I think it was just the original Motor Road. Could be wrong. Or never lived in America, so I don't know. I'm pretty sure I didn't. When they sound only like 90, 96 or 98 games that came out for the TurboGrafx-16 in Omega. I do have a TurboGrafx-16 mind. I've got one with the um, CD unit, which is incredibly rare in, in Britain. And I think they're pretty rare in the US as well. As I say, they're, they're pretty much like rock and roll shit to find in uh, the UK. I've only come across one other person I know of. I I found on eBay who was selling one that I've noticed have got one in the UK. <laughs> With the CD unit that is of course. Other than the weirdly branded UK version Turbo Graphics, which was never an official release, it's just I think uh Telegame has bought up a load of old stock and they just rebranded them. Oh, then some weird deal. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, Motor Road. It's not a bad little game. It's pretty. It's fun. It's not fantastic, but um, it's quite a. It's quite a fun little game. Utopia. A Utopia Two. This is pretty much the PC Engine's answer to Zelda. These are quite. These are quite decent games. So I won't show you too much of these because obviously they're adventure games. And they take a lot to get into. This game would be much better with save states, it would be quite handy with save states actually. I'm gonna actually finish this game, I was playing it on my uh, duo for a while. When I get outside, I'll show you what I mean. This one is locked to up, down, left, right. You can't actually um, run at an angle, which you can do in the uh, in the sequel. As you notice, this is very much like Zelda. Same one screen sort of um, one screen levels and secrets. You get bombed. It's pretty much like a rip off of Zelda, essentially. That's Utopia. I've played it about halfway through, and it's not bad. It's not a bad game. It's not brilliant, but it's pretty decent. The, the second one's better, I would say. But yeah, I'd say if you like Zelda, you're probably at home with this. To be honest, like never really played the original Zelda much, also. Yeah, so that's Utopia. That's uh, worth worth playing. The second one, they improved it a bit. They added you could walk uh, at um, diagonals now as well, which uh, is much easier. Uh, it looks a bit nicer as well. I think that's the boss at uh, the end of the first one. I think. A dream. Oh, his name's Hudson. I think Hudson's soft. Oh.
it's pretty much the same sort of thing, just uh, a little bit nicer looking. I think it's a bit bigger. You can, they've improved the controls a bit. A bit nicer music. You can walk at diagonals now, which is nice. You still got the, the you know, the one screen sort of uh, things. Yeah, this is. You say it's a bit nicer than the first game. I would say this is. Um, same sort of thing though, but that's that's well worth playing. Like I said, I haven't played that one much, unfortunately, because you need to get into it. You know, adventure again. New Adventure Island. So this is a new Wonder Boy game, basically. Uh, it's quite nice, New Adventure Island, especially if you like Wonder Boy. There's a really nice uh, adventure island on the um, SNES with some really funky music by user consumer. Say so if you played uh, Wonder Boy, you get the idea. So it's very similar to that. It's nicer graphics. Get on the skateboard, do your thing, jump over fires. Got to keep collecting the fruits as well, otherwise your energy eventually sort of slowly uh, sort of um, drains down. You've got Master Higgins, who's the name of, it's not Wonder Boy, it's Master Higgins, who was pretty much um, Takahashi Major, which was one of the uh, programmers, I think he was, for Hudson Soft back in the day. Uh, and he was a bit of a front man, who fronted a lot of the uh, live events they did back in the day. Still does a, a blog now, which you can go on and um, translate, and he, he still posts a lot of PC Engine stuff. Main character actually looks like him as well. Ah, like I said, pretty nice game. Uh, I do like New Adventure Island. It's quite cool. Especially if you like that Wonder Boy. Yeah, uh, you know, you're in for a treat there. Ah, Ninja Spirit. Classic arcade game. Didn't see in many places in the arcade. Uh, Brilliant IRM game, unfortunately totally and utterly ruined by the Ninja Pit from Hell on the last level, which was literally just put there to take your money in the arcades. There is an easy route through it on the PC Engine once you work it out, but in the arcades, it, it was it's, it's literally as a game breaker. Apart from this is a really nice Ninja game. Uh, my mate has uh, one credited the arcade game and he said it's probably the hardest game he's ever one credited. You can, the PC Engine uh, version of this, as standard, comes with free hits. So you get free chances, obviously. Um, with the arcade one, uh, there is only one hit, so. Which makes the game solid. Uh, there is an option on this to put it in the arcade difficulty as well. So we'll go back to the standard one hit. But they say this is a really nice ninja game with some uh, really cool levels. A lot of verticality as well. A nice version of the arcade. It's not as good sound and a good looking as the arcade, but it's still very nice. Also very expensive. The arcade's got some really pumping bass soundtrack. PC Engine, uh, I got admit the Iron games on the PC Engine did really well considering the sound chip limitations PC Engine's got. But the arcade soundtracks, uh, they are better, even though I actually prefer... I actually prefer the R-Type soundtrack on the PC Engine, I think. I think. This was always one of those mysterious PC Engine games. You've seen in magazines, but it, it, for some reason it was... I don't know. It weren't easy to get older back in the day. IOM did some really good conversions to the uh, PC Engine. It was like Legend of Tama, this R-Type. Um, what else did they do? Um, Mr. Heli, which is fantastic as well.
Yep. Even, this is my favourite music on the arcade. The music on this level is puppet. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a well recommended ninja game. It's gone really expensive, this game has as well, if you want the original. It's not cheap anymore. I don't know how much the American version goes for. The Japanese version is usually well over 100 quid these days. It's amazing how, how much PC Engine games have gone up over the last, uh, like, probably like six, seven years. Really gone up in price. PC Engine's very collectible. Yes, yeah, so you get the idea, Ninja Spit. Definitely well recommended, does. Power Soul Stars. Or the story of Bubble Bobble Free. The official story of Bubble Bobble Free. Got this game. And I really want to get into it because it, it's quite a funky game. I, I don't mind these type games, uh, the one screen sort of puzzly type uh, platformers. This one's quite nice. Pick up the enemies and throw them. And there's a lot of like water and stuff involved in it because you've got the umbrella. The cool bosses and that. It's mad that this was actually a PC Engine game first and then got converted into the arcade. We can do this as well. You can actually pick up the uh, water. And get the water to actually drop on him. You can use it to kill multiple enemies. And you can keep powering our water up as well. A lot of levels you have got to use the water to your advantage to actually kill enemies off. Very much like a bubble bobble level. It's when these games I actually do want to get quite good at it. You do the bounce on the bubbles like you can do on the uh, bubble bubble. Can I get them all in one go? I know I can. This is a really nice game. This one you need to get uh, a load of bubbles in and then flush it down. Oh, good shot. So there's so many games on this machine that it's just worth buying it just for that game, considering the cost of what that actually game costs like. You know? Oh, I just had a power to power up. Where's he gonna go? So I got it. So yeah, I think I'll have to rush through these a little bit because time's getting on. Yep, so that's um Power Soul Stars. Very good as well. One of the games I do want to get into quite a bit. Not a bad little golf game. If you like golf games, I am, I am actually a bit partial to a golf game for some reason. I don't know why. This is not a bad little golf game. Basically, shoot. Hit the top. Hit on. That was fast. If you like sports games and golf games, not a bad little golf game. There are quite a few like Gunbear, Gunbear Golf Boys, 
from the PC Engine. This is better now, I think. Um, I did a few others as well. Naxet, Naxet Soft, Naxet Golf. Sorry, that was way off. Got some nice music. Huh? Got some pretty funky tunes. Bar's hard to hit. It's fast. Let's see if I can get it in. Nope. <laughs> right, so when he when he oh, that bar's super fast. <laughs> oh, I hit the flag. So it just takes a bit of getting used to. So, I'm going uphill slightly. If I that's going on to the left, I'm going to hit it over there. And I'm going to hit it... Need to hit it way harder than that. We've let down that was it. <laughs> well, it was too hard. Ah. You get the idea. Golf. Not bad. Not brilliant, but not bad. There's certainly worse golf games on the PC Engine. Psychosis. Very strange shooter map. Uh, not too bad though. Knacks that soft as well, which is quite interesting. It's like basically you're flying through some of these madness, I think, and this, this game is essentially supposed to be. Not a bad shoot map, it's not amazing. There's certainly worse shoot maps on the uh, PC Engine, uh, like Rock On, for instance, which is terrible. And Deep Blue. Oh god, Deep Blue. What a terrible game I I hit the ceiling. I can't remember. I've played this game for quite a while. So it's not a bad shooting map. Nothing special. Reminds me for some reason of Curse on the Mega Drive. I don't know why, because it's not really like Curse, but no, it just sort of reminds me of Curse for some reason. Ah, oh, that was a bad move, wasn't it? Oh, I got through it, that was all good. Oh, I got through it, I don't Say psychosis. Certainly not a brilliant shoot weapon for the PC engine, but certainly not a bad one you know. Try the B weapon. Yeah, so that's psychosis guys. It's pretty decent. A few games left. R-Type, well, what can I say, R-Type, PC Engine R-Type, pretty much almost, not quite, but almost arcade perfect. Uh, pretty much the best on version, I think, better than the Sharp 6 8000 version, I'm not, I didn't think that was that great for some reason, I don't know But, um, yeah, this is a fantastic version of the arcade. A really nice music as well. The entire game is on one cartridge. This was, I remember when this came out, um, this was like my favourite shoot map ever for years. It's a very hard game though, it's good though. It's one of those games where it takes, you, you've, you've got to learn the levels, and then once you learn the levels, it become a lot easier. Classic Iron, basically. Dun, 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 dun. 
Yeah, this game, this game is a classic arcade game. It was a massive stir back in the day as well, how good this game was, you know, when it got converted to everything. Everyone wanted a copy of our type. Yep, so that's our type guys, that's well recommended. Tough game, you do have to finish the game twice to finish it. Uh, second time round is really hard. There's a lot of levels on this to take a, a lot of learning, but um, it's worth sticking with it. It is a, it is a classic arcade game. If I get to the boss, I may as well. You got the force pod on the front. Force is called. See if we can quick kill this boss. Ah, I missed it. You can fire the force into him, and it kills him really fast. It's going to go into him now, so you can basically just fire. I always like the sort of um, biomechanical sort of feel of this game. There is, it is missing a few things, like um, the, the arcade's got a little bit of sort of parallax scrolling on it. But apart from that, this, this version is pretty fantastic. That's our type, well worth it. Soldier Blade, the best of the soldier games. There's two versions on you as well. You've got the special edition as well. So this has got the caravan mode as well, score attack mode. But they, they did release a special competition version of this, uh, which was literally caravan mode only, but that is actually on you. You've got to hold down select and start as you select the game. So this is by far the best soldier game. Same sort of weapon systems. You can configure the weapons on this, I believe, as well. <laughs> nice music in this game as well, and nice graphics. A pod on the side of it, you can fire it off, you can use it as a um, special weapon. You basically press on, you can use it as a special and it disappears. It takes, well, sorry, it takes when your power is gone. Um, different weapons do a different special when you use your, your power up. Sometimes you get that one. No problem, you can't use them too much because you'll end up with no uh, weapons. Like the alien alert. alert. Yeah, when the final source got alien approaching. Alien approaching. So I'm going to use the beam on him. <laughs> he keeps reoccurring, that boss does. He'll fly off now. So that's uh, Soldier Bait, so we'll cancel back and we'll try the special version. Hold on, select again on this one, and 
a start. We should insert the special version of the game, so we should get the caravan mode version. Yeah, you are, caravan stage, soldier blade. It's basically the two minute and the five minute. The both modes on you are amazing. There's a lot to this. To score very high on this is very difficult. It takes a lot of practice. There's like certain ways to kill enemies and there's this, there's secrets on the floor. There's some enemies you need to kill uh, together. Some you need to kill all together. They split up on the stages. There's tiles on the floor everywhere which uh, give you bonuses. But stack up as you go through it. And to get a good score on you is really difficult. You've got to be really fast as well, killing all the floor tiles and all the these enemies split. So what you need to do is put your speed on high, basically. Like, there's a bonus for there, which I just missed, I think. That's it. This one, if you get inside here... You get a bonus then for killing it from the inside. There's loads of stuff like that to this game, and uh, five minute mode is, is quite tough as well. There's another bonus for there. Kill these together. Not always that easy. Ah, I missed it. The amount of hours I've spent playing this can kill him with the with the boost like that. There's, it can kill him faster. Here. Point blank, this one's quite good. You can you can can stay at the hog score, but it's, it's better to kill him, I think. Then he goes back up. Then he goes to the left. Right. I want to go try and blank him. There's a couple of bonuses you can get if you're fast enough killing them later on. I can't remember what that my highest score is on this. I think it's um, 600,000, 680,000, I think. Some, some of them are right. I've got it on my duo. So you can see the score difference you can get once you start knowing the game. But yeah, brilliant game, as. Ooh, last couple of games. So, Space Area. Sega game on a PC engine. Who would have thought? They've released quite a few Sega games on the PC Engine. This one is another one where you really need the auto fire. But even though it doesn't have the checkered floor, which is a bit of a shame, this is actually a pretty nice version of Space Aria. It's got quite a lot of levels on it as well, and uh, it's quite tough. I do like this game. Got that classic sort of space area music. So you do need to have the auto fire really though. This game used to be everywhere in the arcade, especially the sit down version. It was like super impressive back in the day as well. This was like all the scaler games were. First boss, here we go, dragon. but you can understand what he says. Yep, so Space Area, recommended. I do like the PC Engine version, but unfortunately you do need order fire. It does make that game a hell of a lot easier. Victory Run. Uh, I do have this game, but it's not the sort of game I've played that much. Hey, this joypad definitely on the one side is a little bit sharp. But it joins. Might end up a tiny bit of very fine sandpaper on that, I think. Maybe just where the join is, just to unsharpen it. Yeah, so in this game, uh, 
you travel across the country, I think it's the deck I rally you doing. And um you can get upgrades to your car and stuff. Like I said, another game I've played a huge amount. A bad little game, you got your hills and stuff. Ooh. It's a bit like a run. Never actually finished this. Music's quite jolly. Yes, yeah, so you get the idea. You basically race across different countries. You get upgrades to your cars, and you can buy tyres and engines and things like that. So I haven't played it much, so it seems okay from what I've played of it. it. Doesn't seem anything special though, but it does seem pretty decent. Talking about something special, uh, we'll do East Last, I think, just for the hell of it. My favourite shooter on the PC. I do like that they've used a, a, the American CD-ROM system there. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. I do love this game. Fantastic music. Really good graphics. Made by Red again, actually. Except for looks the crappiest, but the Earth Armour is definitely the best armour in this game. Those bombs absolutely kick ass. Especially when they full powered up, they're immense. They destroy everything. Dun, 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 dun. You've got to collect the crystals in this because you need the crystals for the shop. You need to buy weapons and upgrades in the shop and you get your energy back and your power levels back. So basically, you need to collect all the crystals in this game. And take, ah, I missed it. Usually, if you take out one now to get a power up, get a power up off it. You use your sword as well when you get close to stuff. But to be honest, the bombs are more powerful. Ah, I'm getting quite a bit there. It does have uh, a fantastic metal soundtrack, this game does as well. Worth the price of this machine just for this game. I did have two copies of this at one point. I had uh, Winds of Thunder, which is pretty much the American, uh, the Japanese version, sorry, and Lords of Thunder, which is the American version. Uh, I sold my Japanese one just basically because I prefer the name Lords of Thunder. I think it just sounds better.
get to the boss and then we'll uh, we'll have a go east. So these bombs will if you can time me right, these bombs will absolutely destroy this boss. Sometimes not worth doing it, but ah, he's dead. So that's loads of fun. Brilliant game, loads of levels. Uh, you say you need your money for the shop, as you'll see in a second. There is four different armors, but um, you can buy bombs. You can get your power levels back. You can get your energy back. So full. I'll show you these bombs fully powered up. When they hit stuff, when they fully powered up, they explode forward. Ruin things, absolutely destroy things, these bombs do. So I just want to carry on playing this game, though. stop, stop. Like this game too much. Yeah, highly recommended that game is. I say that is my favourite shooter on the PC Engine. Uh, and down to my favourite adventure game of all time. I know this game can look a little bit crappy, but it does have absolutely fantastic voice acting, and it does have an epic soundtrack. Really good game as well. Really good fun. I do like how they make a CD. Ah, and the loading screen, that's cool. And that is the 1.1 um, uh, CD card as well. That's quite clever. I've played this game probably about 18 times and every now and then I'll go through it again. This is a fantastic version of this game. Falcom did make some damn good games. They had weird battle systems, mind, but um, they did make some very good games. I do like these games. I would like to play them all at some point. I, I finished quite a few of them. I want to finish the latest one. I bought it on the PlayStation in the sale. It's really nice, the latest one as well. But they've got a new one coming out soon. East 9, I think it is. The intro to this game is class as well. East, the ideal utopia. Once the country so prosperous is free, the people were as free as the wind. Once the country overlooked by his two beautiful princesses. As you'll see in a minute. This game's got a fantastic soundtrack, and it was voiced by a load of TV and film actors. So the voice, the voiceovers on this are fantastic. standard TV card. I 
say with this version of the game as well, you get the two East games. They both run from the end of the first one straight into the second game. I see graphics in this game, it, you know, not the best. And like you to kill enemies, you walk into them, which is a bit weird, but there is a bit of tactics to it. But uh, I certainly love this game. It is my favourite adventure game. I'll probably end up finishing it again on this mini, just for the hell of it. I used to have this as well, the American version. I bought it back a day years ago in an import shop in Cardiff. Quite a lot of um, adventuring you need to do in this game. He asked me to get a weapon, so I've literally got to go and buy a weapon. Pretty much most of these games follow the same sort of way the weapon systems work. Your armor and your shield, so entry. They say they all follow the same thing. The second one on the PC Engine, uh, sorry, the third one, it's got some absolute terrible scrolling and terrible graphics, but it is actually really good. This is how you kill enemies in this game. Sort of just walk into them at an angle. Can't walk straight into him because if you walk straight into him, you will end up getting hit. Like that. But, like I said, it may not have the greatest battle system in the world in this game, but uh, this game's got a really great story and it's brilliant. I love it. It is my favourite adventure game. So what you have to do to start essentially is just hog enough to buy your shield. You've got to be a little bit careful because you can't get killed really quick. Like I say, the, the soundtrack to this game is phenomenal. And by using Shiro as well. Oh, the original track was done with Yusuke Shiro. I don't know if he did the remix. So this came out on a lot of Japanese computers and stuff as well, so... so it's, it's quite an old game, but I think it's a really early 80s uh, RPG. Yeah, it's earning enough money. Uh, I say I can't show too much of this game, because it takes rages. And before we go, I am going to show you the intro, because the intro is pretty cool. I'm going to start it back up again. Yes, the ideal utopia. I'm gonna have to show that and then uh, we'll quit the streaming. these games come out on loads of machines. You can get them on the Famicom as well, there's a mass system. When I first ever played it, it was a mass system. Uh, there's a couple of versions, DOS and Windows. I wouldn't mind playing for the Windows version at one point, but it doesn't look as good as the PC Engine one, to be honest. Even though it does have some remix graphics. It came out on the Arc Sharp X6000, the old Sharp computers, the old PC, 90, uh, PC88 I think it was on as well. It's pretty much been on loads of stuff. I like the intro.
Is, the ideal utopia. Once a country so peaceful and prosperous. A country where children were as free as the wind. Lovely. A country where harmony blew through the hearts of all men. Is. A kingdom ruled by the wisdom and charity of its six powerful priests. An empire watched over and blessed by the enchanting aura of its two beautiful goddesses. Is. The seemingly tranquil paradise suddenly pulled from the height of its civilization to the empty abyss of infinite isolation. How could such a land of promise simply vanish from the face of the planet? How could such prosperity be forgotten? The legend has been silenced for over 700 years. And now, the mystery unfolds. Awesome. Hey, well, the bad guy you knew. He's a right evil bastard. He's got a really, I can't remember who does his voice, but his voice was really good. And he is a bit of an evil twat. Plus, anyway guys, that is uh, East 1 and 2. So, that's the PC Engine Mini. Uh, this was a hell of a long stream, I've got to give it that. I tried to play some of the games, I'd skip, I'd skip through some of them pretty quick. It was taking so long. This PC seems, seems pretty class. I've got to say, if you, you know, like I said, I don't really need it. I just bought it because it's a cool, it's a really nice collectible. It does have some fantastic games on it. It does play really well. It does seem like it's got very minimal lag. It does feel, the controls feel really nice and tight. It's the only mini console with a super long lead as well, which is pretty good. So it's at least three meters long. Uh, it looks exactly like an old PC Engine, but a little tiny version. Even has the uh, little same color cover on the back, uh, like on the original one. Uh, pad's nice as well, feels like a original pad. Could have done with Autofire, so I do understand why they released it with the pad without Autofires, because that's what it came with originally. But it could have done with an Autofire pad, but you can buy them. Um, the screen modes are pretty nice. The you know the CRT filter looks a bit gash. I don't know why. I don't know why they keep me good blurry filters and nice scan lines. Don't make any sense. I do like the overlays, especially the one I'm using. I think that's pretty cool. I quite like that. Um, yeah, seems like a really nice machine. And if you like PC Engine or just a bit interested in some of the games, it's a pretty fantastic pickup. I think that probably pretty is the best mini console. It's got the best games out of all the mini consoles. Uh, it's got a pretty uh, excellent uh, games list on it. Right, there's a few in there which Japanese only, but there's not many. The majority of games in there are well playable, and there's some really expensive stuff on there as well. So they didn't cheap out really with what they put on there, and it'll probably get hacked pretty quick as well. And yeah, so you'll probably be able to put on there whatever you want. God knows what hardware is in there, what storage, but it does a very nice job there. Uh, thumbs up to M2 for doing a really nice job of this PC Engine. Looks like they did a better job in this than uh, they did on some of the other ones. The menus are fantastic. The menus are really cool. Go back to the menu. Yeah, definitely well recommended. Like I said, if you do want to get yourself one of these, uh, get on Amazon Co. Um, JP and you can buy them on there. I think they're still available. And they work out if you want to import them to the UK, it's about 115 quid. And that covers the input duty as well. At least I haven't been charged any input duty yet. So as far as I know, it's all in. I call this and uh, goes under Amazon Global Delivery, Global Express Delivery. So yeah, really nice machine, well recommended, and I love it actually. I think it's really good. Like I said, I do have a lot of nostalgia for the PC Engine, so maybe that's why I like it so much. I don't know. But if you get any interest in any PC Engine stuff. You want to try a uh, you know a nice selection of the catalog out. Can't go wrong for hundred quid for a PC Engine Mini. So thanks for watching the stream, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you again with something else. I'm working on another game to try and do a one credit of it if I can. So we'll see. It's something quite cheesy, but <laughs> we'll have a go over it anyway. Right. See you guys.